All right, guys, a couple more minutes for lots more people come in. But I wanted to say hi. Hello to Scotland. Aaron, how's it going? Marcus apparently is a Futurama fan. Um, how can we find the center of gravity of an object in SketchUp? I believe there is a, an extension for find center of mass, but I don't remember who, I think Tig made it? There's something out there that does it. It's not a native functionality. Hello, Indonesia. Hello, Maridius? Mauritius? Mar yeah, that. Wales, that's easier to say. Thank you. Um, hi, guys. Spain, hello. Iceland. You know, with a name like Thor coming from Iceland, that just it's aligns somehow. That's cool. Denmark, welcome back, Gamborg. And Matthew finally made it live. <laughs> I'm glad you found the time. Thank you for hanging with us. All right, we're just going to give about one more minute, guys, and then we'll flip over and start up. But uh, hopefully everybody's having a great Friday so far. I mean, we're hanging out, talking about SketchUp, so something's going right. All right, we are, it's noon, it is it is noon. So, how's everybody doing? How's, oh, you know what, hold on, I forgot something. I'll be back. I forgot to turn the light on. I wait till the very last second because you guys have heard me comment before that I'm not in the uh, the coolest of rooms in here when we do this thing. Uh, I can get a little toasty in here, so I try to turn the light off, light on last thing. But uh, I did remember, so that's 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 good. How's everybody doing? Everybody enjoying their Friday so far? I am. I'm glad glad we're back here. This is this is cool. Um, I'm excited to be doing this. This is my favorite thing to do on a Friday. You know, I enjoy hanging out with you guys, playing with SketchUp, good stuff. Um, we have somebody new helping us out today. Today on the other side of the monitor is Katya. Say hello, Katya. Hello, Katya. So that's going to work. You know how that's going to that's gonna be good. Um, so Katya's going to help out with uh, when I get stuck and forget that everybody, you guys just don't talk very loud, so sometimes I, I forget you're there. No, I never forget you're there, but if I miss a, a, a question or something like that, she's going to help me with that. Help me monitor the comments. Um, but this is going to be fun. Uh, hello. Spain, uh, Minsk, Aaron Powell's done for the day. Oh, I know. That's one of the nice things about living in the future. We got a lot of time travelers on here. Some people are already going to bed on here. Some people are just waking up. It's a, it's a worldwide event that we have going on here. All right, so we are going to spend a day working on, uh, I'm going to model Big Ben, and I should point this out, I'm aware, I was, I was instructed on this before uh, we even started this, that Big Ben is in fact the bell that is in the clock tower that we're gonna be modeling. But, like most Americans, I just think of the big tower as being Big Ben. But we're gonna model the clock tower that houses Big Ben, so nobody has to, to yell out that that's what's going on. I, I know, I, I know, I know. Um, but hopefully you guys have some knowledge of Big Ben because mine is very little. I've, I've seen it, but um, that's about it. So before we hop in here, um, I do, there's a couple things I want to take a look at. So we're going to do those things. This is the first thing. I got to give a shout out to someone that we found on Instagram, and I just started following him like today because his page is awesome. You should check him out. And I'm probably going to kill his name, but I'm going to do my best. I believe it's Milad Pirdavari. I'm sure I'm doing that incorrect with my, my unintelligent American tongue. But what Milad does is I, he, he just has an awesome channel with renderings and SketchUp models. It's a great thing to follow. But what he just did just recently is he did this thing he's calling the No Plugin Challenge. And if I can just 
click on some of these. So he came up with this shape, the idea of it's the, you know, like a piece of paper folded over itself, stripped, strip, folded at 90 degrees. And uh, he challenged his uh, followers to model that in SketchUp with no extensions, which is so cool. So <laughs> if you guys want to uh, give it a shot, he did, uh, so he actually originally posted it, I think two days ago, and then yesterday posted an animation, a GIF of his solution, how he did it. I, I did it, and I actually did it. My steps were very different from the steps he used, um, which is, I've mentioned before, one of my favorite things about SketchUp. There's so many ways to do different things in SketchUp. So it was very cool, though. Well worth checking out. I, I suggest uh, you check out what he did and see how he did it. Actually, before you do that, try to model it yourself. No extensions, no Bezier, no push line, no... Uh, actually, you could just download Fredo's tools and do some bending. It would be pretty simple to do, but you got to do without all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's definitely it was a fun challenge, and like I said, it was really neat to see he did it totally differently from the way I did it. Um, it'd be interesting to see both of our models how close they are once once finished. So check that out. I'll leave his name up here just for a second. Milad Pirdavari, I think. So yeah, go follow him and uh, try to try to do his challenge. It's pretty cool. All right, the other thing to point out, of course, is I did make another uh, forum topic. I'm trying to name these as self-explanatory as possible so you guys don't get lost, but Live Modeling Big Ben is what I chose. I like the way it rolled off my tongue, it sounded good. Um, but in there, that's where if you guys have good pictures as we're doing this stream, you can throw them up there and then I can actually grab them and inference them, refer to them, whatever, as we start modeling. So um, I was going to look at one more thing, and I totally forgot. I was going to try to grab the extension, the large, uh, let's, you know, nothing ever goes wrong just grabbing extensions live. So I think we'll just start with that. Let's just go find the uh, large image importer. I'm not 100% sure if, uh, if Dave's on here. He can tell me where to find it. I'll look and see if it's in the warehouse. Um, because I do have, uh, I'm, wrong warehouse. <laughs> wow, so that might be how today goes. Good thing I can always blame it on it being Friday, huh? Let's see, large image, what do we got for large image? Large image splitter? That might be it, I think that's it. Split high resolution into smaller tiles that render sharply. Let's do it. It's from Aurelius, and uh, I don't know if you guys have met this guy. Good guy, great guy, smart guy, knows a lot about SketchUp, and he can do things like this that I can't do. This is uh, smart developer stuff. I'm happy to model things. I'm a, I'm a grunt force designer, though, not, not uh, an elegant programmer like some of these people, people are, but yeah, Aurelius has some great extensions out there. A lot of them uh, that I've used are around graphics and that kind of thing, images, so. I'm gonna go ahead and install this one. Yes, I do wanna install it. Okay, I don't know how this works. Um, so what, what I'm gonna work from, ooh, I got an icon, that's a good sign. So here's what I'm gonna work from. I have a couple of images. <clears throat> let's, let's run through these real quick. So this was the first one that I, I grabbed. This, I'm guessing, is the original set of plans it's pretty faded. I don't see any usable dimensions or text on here. It's not super high resolution, but it's a cool old drawing. I, I respect that. I think it's pretty neat. So I downloaded this, but I don't know how actually usable it will be. Um, let's see as we zoom in here. It's, it's so low resolution. I don't know that we could actually get much out of it, but I really thought it was a cool image. So I downloaded it anyhow. From there, <laughs> I grabbed some uh, different screenshots. So I'll look at some of these. Uh, I got this nice big picture of the face of the, t of the clock. That's awesome. Um, what I really want to do in here is start with the mass, or like we usually do, is get the mass of the tower in there, and then we'll just start building the details. I don't know how much we're going to get to, but uh, I want to get as many details as possible in here. 
Now we'll just start there. We'll start big and just start detailing, detailing, detailing. Um, that's a good one. And then I have a couple that are just like, this was one of the few pictures I could get that had the full thing top to bottom, but it's pretty well distorted. But you can actually see how many levels there are, are on this one. Not, again, kind of a reference that we can look at. Uh, this was less distorted, but you can't see the bottom of the tower. And then I got this one image, which is a huge image, but pretty nice. I mean, this is, it's not perfectly orthogonal to the camera, but man, this is a good one to actually maybe model off of. Like I said, the problem is this is an enormous image, um, which is why I wanted to get that extension that I just grabbed. So if I hop back in here, uh, Let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and hit it. You need to have an image entity selected. All right, so let's import an image. You notice how I refuse to actually like read the instructions or anything and just click the button. That's how we roll here on Friday afternoons. I'm going to import, I think I called it ben.png. And I'm just going to throw this in here. I have no idea what to do. All right, I'm going to pick it. Okay. Wow, that's pretty cool. Actually, let me, let me do this. Let's 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 do a test real quick. I'm gonna take two copies. This is the original. And I'll take this one. And I'll hit large image splitter. Say okay. I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't tell. All right, it may be time to read the instructions. Or maybe let's try this. What happens if I tell it to do 2,000 pixels? Oh, that line moved down, so that's probably lower quality. Do we want a bigger number? See what happens when we say something like 300. Nope, bigger number was better, I think. Oh heck, I don't know how to use this thing. <laughs> I apologize, I was gonna go play with that beforehand and then I ran out of time. Somebody booked me for a meeting at 10 o'clock. I mean, don't they know I got things to do? I gotta hang out with you guys. Um, yeah, so anyhow, we'll work from this. This is, this is plenty enough detail to get the roughed in dimensions. What I don't have, the, the thing that I'm missing that I need from somebody out there is I need a dimension. I need to know how big something on here is. If you guys can, somebody can find me uh, the, the height to the top, that would be great. Um, the width of the clock would work. Give me a dimension. I need something that I can pull off of here and uh, actually scale the whole thing. Um, no, Mitch, I don't think my, my pants don't say anything. They're just jeans. They're, they're my standard wear. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, so if somebody can get me that number, who knows how big ben, Big Ben is? How big the clock tower of Big Ben? I'm just gonna refer to it as Big Ben, you guys. I've already told you, I know this isn't the Big Ben's the tower that's in, or the bell that's in here somewhere, maybe that's it. Um, but I'm just gonna call this thing that we're modeling Big Ben. Um, it yeah. says 315 feet. 315, oh, I got a discrepancy. I got 315 and 320. Oh, I also see 320. Hmm. Oof. Let's go bigger. I'm gonna say 320. It says right. the clock face is 23 feet in diameter. Woo, that's a lot of clock. All right, so I'm gonna take that right now. I'm gonna scale that using my, I'm assuming, I'm going to the top, this part right here. I don't know, we're, we'll be close. Close enough. That's gonna be 300, oops, 320 feet. Ryan's gonna run out and double check. He's gonna do a quick field measurement, make sure we're close. Thanks, Ryan. All right, there we go. 
Okay, I just had that moment. You guys know, I have this moment every time where I go, what am I doing? <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Oh, this is a lot of stuff to model. This is the way I felt at the beginning of Hogwarts. That turned out okay. I just didn't know what I was gonna do. Um, all right, so here's my thought on this. Thought number one <clears throat> is, for the most part, I know this, this connects to the building, the main building at the bottom. I'm gonna just model as a standalone tower. So this, this, it's gonna be like this. I can worry about where it connects up. The four sides, as far as I know, are pretty much the same. So that's nice, because I only have to model one quarter of what, uh, of, of the entire thing. So we can, <clears throat> excuse me, just model a quarter of it. That's gonna make it, it's gonna simplify some of the modeling. Um, I also think from looking at this, it looks like I have some repetition here with the, the layers, the levels as they work up. This right here looks the same as this, looks the same as this, looks the same as this, looks the same as this. So this, this chunk, one, two, they, it looks like they're slightly different sizes, but I'll probably model this once and then maybe squish them uh, vertically to the different sizes. So that's nice because, at least initially, to get the initial, initial blocking in. Then when it's time to go in and put details in, uh, I can break those apart. Um, the bottom measures 39 feet wide. Excellent. So let's see. That's about, oh, the, the sides would be from here to here, it looks like. Yeah, I, I can verify that. My picture's about 39 feet. Um, so it looks like what we got here is we got like on the front, front section, uh, it's got little, little sections that stick out here and here. But if we go, if we want to say 39 feet, that works for me. I'm going to come here. I'm going to draw a line across 39 foot. Uh, meh, not quite. Didn't quite get us there. All right, so we're going to be slightly out of scale, but I'm going to go with the, the drawing on this one. I'm gonna come across, let's see. I do wanna to try to get to a round measurement if possible. So I might say, I'm gonna say it's 42 feet for, for this part of the, and then I'm gonna take that up to, I'm gonna to go to this piece right here, 66 feet, whoops, 66 foot, enter. I'm going to take that across to right here. Whoops. A lot of whoopses this morning or this, this afternoon or today. <laughs> All right. So there. Yeah. And you guys can imagine how it pretty much takes care of itself from there. Um, yeah, they're doing some work on it right now, right? That's, uh, there's, there's stuff happening. There's a... Uh, when I was looking at it, I saw a lot of current pictures. We had the scaffolding all around it. Looks like it's wrapped up in a spider web kind of thing. It's pretty pretty cool looking. Um, all right, so let's say that this piece is going to come over. Let's see where's five feet at. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say four foot six. I did find it interesting. Maybe you guys are doing this for my benefit, but I noticed how everybody's been calling out dimensions in feet rather than meters or centimeters or something meters, which I'm assuming is what you work on Big Ben in. Um, I'm not gonna do that to you all because that'd be painful for everybody involved. It's not that I don't, I actually, I really, I think I've said this before, I really enjoy, uh, working in metric is actually pretty easy because everything is nice and evenly divided. Uh, oh, Ryan's back with his measurements. 319.7 inch ish high. That's an approximate measurement to some place on the building. Um, good, we're, we are in that ish. We're solidly entrenched in that ish measurement. All right, so all I did here was I kind of mocked up the general shape. These pieces right here, these uh, pieces that point up do come out from the face. I have over here, I can see the side, I can actually kind of get approximate reference of how far they come out. It looks like they come out maybe 
three and a half feet, something like that. Sure, says I. So I'm gonna say 3.5 feet, do the same thing here, and I'm gonna reverse this space. All right, so right now, I'm gonna grab this, I'm going to make it a component, I'm just call it, this is a side of, of Ben. We're close like that. First name basis. All right, whoops, Mark's in there. Let's cut Mark out. We'll paste Mark back in here just for reference. Mark's gonna stand right there. All right, so I have this right now. Um, I'm gonna do something that I uh, recently learned. So one of the things I normally do, you guys have seen me do this if you've watched before, I take my images, usually I do it after the fact, I'm like, you know what I should have done? I take my images and I will throw them on a layer called ref. And that way I can toggle my ref layer on and off as I'm working through here uh, when I need it. Um, Ryan, are you being serious right now? Had a laser measure? I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. I want. I want to think that's true, though. I really. I honestly hope that that you really were able to go laser measure, Big Ben. My thing is just, unless you live across the street, I don't think you had the time. And I think there's. I don't know. I don't really know the spot around Big Ben, but I'm gonna pretend it's true. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is something that uh, somebody on the forum called this out actually. Uh, if I take my model, I'm going to save it because I'm so, I'm good at saving. So I'm going to save this as Big Ben. I'm going to come up to File, and I'm going to add this to a location. It doesn't matter where I add it. Um, I just have to use the Add Location on it real quick. So I'm just going to select a region from uh, Boulder, little region, and say Import. All right, so when that imports, hey, this is how big uh, SketchUp is. This is the, the SketchUp building is to Big Ben. I mean, it's taller in real life, but that's interesting. Um, big Ben's big. So uh, once I do this, I, I'm not really concerned with the geolocation. I said I can put it anywhere. What I'm looking for, though, is the ability to do this. Show terrain. So I hit show train and it toggles on and off. I know that in and of itself is not exciting. Hold on, there's more. So I can't put a shortcut key on this ref layer. So I can't, no matter what I do, I can't say um, if I hit the D key, toggle reference on and off. That's not an option because that's not a command. Shortcuts tie directly to commands in SketchUp. Um, this is the state of the layer. So that doesn't help me. But what I can do, is I can toggle, or I can put a shortcut, so if I look at my preferences, preferences is under the Windows menu on Windows, under SketchUp menu on uh, Mac. If I look at my shortcuts, if I look for geo, geolocation show terrain is a shortcut assignable command. So I've assigned the D key to it. So if I come out here and I tap on my keyboard D, it toggles that. And look what happens over here. These are my, my two layers, layer location snapshot and location terrain. If I click that, it toggles those on and off. This is a secret behind the scenes. There's nothing special about these layers. All that happens is when you do a geolocation, it grabs two things, puts them in groups, locks them, and puts them on those specific layers. I can come in here and I can right click, unlock, and delete this one. It does nothing to my layers. I can still hit the D and toggle. If I come to this one, I can do the same thing. Unlock, delete, and now I can take my image and move it from the ref layer to location snapshot. And now if I hit the D key, I can actually toggle that image on and off with just one shortcut key. So that was actually W03Dan on the forum uh, suggested that. We have a skill builder coming out in a little bit, but you few hundred people watching this will get a 
sneak peek on that. It'll be out. It'll be a good video still, even if you, even if you, I gave away the secret here. All right. Hi, Marconi. Welcome to Friday. Um, somebody is asking what the thing in my left hand is. This right here is what's called a 3D mouse. This specific one is from 3D Connection. It's called the Space Mouse Enterprise. And what this lets you do is as you move the puck around, you actually move the model. So it lets you navigate in 3D. Absolutely not a requirement for running SketchUp at all, but it is kind of nice uh, if you do a lot of presentation or a lot of modeling. It's a quick and easy way to move around inside of SketchUp. All right, I'm gonna do one thing right now. I can get rid of my ref layer, actually. I'm not using that anymore. And I'm gonna to toggle that back on. I'm gonna grab all this, my reference image and what I've drawn so far. I'm gonna move it vertically so the bottom of my model is at the origin. That when I, when I toggle this off, my tower won't be floating in the air. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna grab it by the corner, make a copy right here and rotate that 90 degrees. Then I'll grab both of these now, option, move them to right here, rotate again. All right, there we go. So this is Big Ben thus far. The nice thing is if I toggle that back on right now, I don't have to worry about all this stuff because it's just gonna happen by itself. It'll be automatic. All right, so um, let's see. I have a couple pieces here. This section, hmm, is, well, we'll call it mm, 11 foot six. I'm gonna take that over to here, it's right there. And then down, oops, I drew that, drew that outside of the component. If that ever happens, don't delete and start over. Grab it. I know you called, got, got me, Alberto. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, grab it, Command X or Control X to cut, and then I can go into this and just edit, paste in place. I do that a lot. Um, I'm not isolating the geometry just yet. I might, well, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, I know, more Arthic gotch, gar <laughs> Gothic arches. Uh, um, reverse faces. So right now I'm just gonna map out this geometry. I'm gonna just get some faces on here to start with. I'm going go 59 feet. And one of the things you guys are probably already picking up, you can already see the distortion happening. Um, where I was pretty square at the bottom, I'm already starting to come out of square. So I'm just gonna kind of go off of one side as a reference. Uh, where did I make that last one? So this down here was 11.6. This is obviously smaller. So we'll say this is six foot six. Like that. This one right here will take up to 33 foot six. Probably nice, perfect round numbers if I was in metric. <laughs> All right, this is where we're gonna step out for the clock face. Um, so I'm gonna come out three foot. And come up to here. 46 feet. Come over here, come out three feet. Come up. So this is, it's overlapping with our other pieces. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push pull this, this surface right here. Oops. Out three foot. So for right now that's, that's good enough. Um, I'm gonna clean all this up again. I'm just making, just massing right now. So I wanna come in now. Oh man, there's so much detail in here. This is gonna be so fun. Uh, let's see, we'll come in four feet. And then I'm gonna come over here, same thing, come in four feet. And we'll 
we'll take that up. 14 feet. Again, I'm getting that uh, the photo distortion happening. All right, so here we got, uh, it's not exactly a, uh, it's not an arch, it actually swoops, kind of has a little, or it is an arch. It's, it's not a straight uh, angle. It's not a straight pitched roof. There's actually a little bit of a arch to it. So let's do that. Let's come up here, say 21 foot six. I'm rounding to the nearest six inches. I don't know if you guys caught that. I'm gonna come over this way, nine foot six. Apparently I'm not uh, gonna get any even Foot dimensions either. Oops. Didn't draw that line straight. All right, let's do it again. I connected the wrong spot. All right, let's go up. Uh -huh. 22 foot six. And then come over. We'll say nine foot. And then I'm just draw an arc from there back to here, like that. I'm going to grab that arc, and I'm going to use rotate on the blue axes to just flip it along the midpoint, like that. I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to leave it like that right now. So right now I'm do that is actually that this volume will actually go into the model. So this will actually be going in. Um, actually, maybe we should just do that now. No, hold up. Just, just finish, finish the reference, man. Mm -hmm. All right. So Donald we'll, pointed out that Big Ben was built before England switched to the metric system. So oh, you're, you're, you're safe using feet and inches. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for covering me on that one. Um, that's interesting. I still I still don't quite get why. 44 feet, 11 feet, draw one more arc. Um, I don't know. I know our military used to, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but our military used to use, whoops, that's not going to work. Uh, this is the photo distortion I was talking about before. Let's see, how long is this thing? All right, so I'm just going to take this back one foot. Draw another arc here. There we go. And then, um, so saying, I don't know if you guys know this. Maybe it has information on this, but I believe. All right, and that'll be that'll be a whole other thing. That topper right up there. Um, yeah. So uh, no, I agree. Some people are saying use transparency. Um, Absolutely, I could turn on x-ray. I do a lot of tracing in x-ray, that works great. Uh, I'm not really, I don't care about details right this second. Again, just roughing in the geometry. I did something here. That's, was not intentional. I don't know how I did that. Go back there, okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna hit my, my key right now. Awesome, that looks cool. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix this, fix where these align. I'm gonna have to put some swoopies here. That's a technical term. And what I'm gonna do right now to simplify this is I am gonna go up to view, I'm gonna to go to component edit and hide similar components. I wanna get rid of those other four pieces because I don't need them right now. Uh, okay, so here's one thing that I need to do. This needs to get pushed in. So this is three feet, so I'm gonna come this way three foot. So I'm gonna do this. Same thing over here, three foot. What that'll do is that will give me a nice clean uh, face when I have these others, so each, each edge will connect together. Well, that's all I want is just one seam going all the way up like that. Um, let's get rid of these extra lines. All right, that looks good. But you can see this one didn't quite, this, this actually has to go back further 
So what I'm going to do, again, I could, I could probably do some math or check some dimensions, but instead I'm going to draw a line here, I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to push this back to that point. Come over here, same thing, put that back like that. There we go. Cool. That does mean, however, that all of this needs to move back also. So I'm just going to grab it, slide it back. Simple. All right, now for this. Um, I'm going to double click and make this into a group. I want to do that because I need to position it where it's going to actually go. Uh, and I don't want to have it join with geometry. So I'm doing a temporary group to isolate it. I'm going to do a rotation at the point. Swivel it like that. Awesome. And I'm going to move it back to here. And then I can explode that. I should probably actually, before I do that, turn it because it's totally going the wrong direction. There we go. That's what I want. I want that in one group, and I'm just going to take it and push it all the way through like that. And now I'm going to grab this shape, make it a group, go in and push that through this way. All right, a lot of lines going on right now. I know. There's a lot of, actually, I can get rid of this shape too. So what I created was, okay, let's do this. Also turn on Hydra's model. So I created this. Ooh, I don't like that. I'll clean that up real quick. Just an option erase to smooth that out. And then I got this. I'm going to take the two of these now, two groups. Both of them are, should be solid groups too. If I pick here, solid group. Pick here, solid group. But I can take them and I can go to my solid tools and I can click, I always forget the names of the solid tools, so I have to wait, intersect. Intersect basically says, give me just the spots where these two completely overlap each other. So if I click that, what I should get is that, which works. It's not completely what I want because, I'm gonna go ahead and explode it. I actually wanna get rid of this and this. Whoops, I deleted too much. Easy enough fix. All right, so that is actually what I want there. All right, so we're working our way in. Again, because we stepped in now, I'm going to grab this section and scoot it back over. Beauty, it's all coming together. And I'm going to do the exact same thing right here. I'm going to grab this, make it a group, go in and push pull that through. All right, so I'm getting those, those lines there. I'm gonna grab that, use my weld extension to make that one smooth line. I love that extension. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Same thing, extension, weld. Now when I push pull, ooh, smooth. All right, beauty. Same thing I did before. I can actually get rid of this side. I don't actually need it. I don't need this extra line. Grab this, same thing. Make this into a group. And now I can, I'll rotate it 90 degrees. That was actually the easier way to do it, I guess. All right, and I'll push that through like that. So at the end of the day, all I really want is this one surface on the inside, but I'm using uh, intersect to Break it. I could use. I could actually just use intersect face. The right click and intersect command. Uh, either of those will work. Basically, whatever gets me, whatever isolates this geometry from the rest of the model. That's all I'm interested in. All right. Hey, we got a little bit of Big Ben. All right. So some of the things that aren't going to work in this case, in this model, as we start working through. I'm not going to be able to do things like right click and, uh, well, I could try it actually. It might work okay. Orient faces isn't necessarily going to work perfectly because I'm not really dealing with a solid. So you can see down here, I have some problems. I should be able to do like this. 
I'm actually dealing with uh, kind of a single face. So let's try orient face again. All right, so it's working all right, but I'm not actually modeling a full solid. Um, water break. Um, yeah, pretty much done. Now I just put a uh, put some textures on here, and we head out early today. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's no fun. Uh, this is when the good stuff starts. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and save. I know you guys were itching for me to do that. Um, Aaron Bowers is asking if we take requests. We absolutely love requests. In fact, I think most of the things we've done have been because people have requested. I had to make up stuff for the first three or four of them, but I would say uh, a majority of what we model here is based on requests. So go ahead, throw requests out. You can actually put them in the comments as we're, as we're doing this, and uh, we'll try to keep track of that. Uh, yeah, lots of errands. The errands, errands are uh, outweighing the everyone else's today. So just saying, better catch up, Joseph's. All right, so if I go toggle this back on again, and uh, let's, let's take a peek at x-ray real quick. All right, so this is what I was talking about before. We actually have a repeating pattern right here. This thing kind of repeats. Let me do something. I'm going to go to my styles and edit my styles. And... Uh, Look at my x-ray. Right. I like that look a little bit. I'm, just, I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but I do have the ability in uh, my styles to go to the, I don't know what the name of this tab is, the, sol the second cube tab, and I can actually edit my transparency preferences. So right here, I can change it from between nicer and faster. Faster is optimized for you know, drawing to your screen as quick as possible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click it to nicer. One of the things that nicer does, it kind of gives me a, a, a fill to my clear uh, materials. So in here I can actually come in and I can control just how transparent I want things to be. I don't really want it like, like, you know, invisible so I can't see anything. I actually want it pretty close to, not 100%, not if I go all the way up to 80, this is as opaque as my transparency can get. But for what I'm doing right now, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. I want enough detail on here that I could start roughing in the shapes of these windows. Aaron, I'm curious. Do you ever yes, eye drop the material onto the faces and then reduce the opacity of the material? I haven't, but that is actually a great way to do it. Um, I guess my this is probably this is probably a fundamental thing. What do you what do you like to use? I didn't realize. I'm sorry. My uh, my solid tools are behind my head. I apologize for that. If anybody was upset by that, um, one of the things I really like in SketchUp is this look right here. This all white solid. And I know you can refill textures. And I don't know. For me, I just end up using reference images. But you know what? I've used reference images a lot, so let's let's go ahead and we're going to actually use exactly what Katya is talking about. Um, I'm going to turn this on again, and I'm just going to scoot it back. I'm going to scoot it straight back like this. Um, ooh, wonder how that's going to work. That now that I use that image splitter, <laughs> let's find out. I'm going to grab it and explode it, and then I'm going to erase the lines and. <laughs> uh oh, this this could get this could. It might not work for this one. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm committed now. Okay, I'm as committed as you can be, having an undo hotkey under one of your fingers. Nope, that <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> all right, but what I can do is uh, I can grab all of these and I can right click and I can say combine textures. Let's see. That should I'm get me. Curious what that does to the quality. Back to that. It did give me lines at the breaks. Yeah, it's yeah, not as combined, good as it was before. Yeah, combined tends to really bring down the quality. But hey, it's gonna it'll it'll work for what I want to do. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go to uh, texture and make it a projected texture. I'm gonna come in here. Well, actually, first I'm gonna use 
my select. I'm going to hit the modifier key, command to pick this texture. I'm going to come in here and use my paint bucket to fill a couple of these in. All right, those are the parts that I'm concerned with right now. Those are the parts I want to model real quick. All right, so if I look in here, like I said yeah, they're not, the quality's not it's, it's not beautiful. It's bad. Yeah, it, it might almost be worth it to add up more of them or go back to the way you were going to do it for this one. Yeah, we'll see. What's, it's, hey, this is part of the fun. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so what that did was this, this isolated just this section. I'm going to model this section once, and then I'm going to reuse it with scale to fill in this, 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 and this. Um, I know it's not a perfect like uh, percentage scale. There's some differences here, but uh, it's going to be good enough to start. So um, this, we're, we're having a cake delivery happening right now off camera. So. Uh, Sugar and flour just showed up just out of arm's reach. Thanks, Colin. Big tease. He's Thank you, Colin. Thanks for bringing that by. We miss a lot of the social things that happen when we're in here on Fridays because when you do a social thing, you do it Friday after lunch, right? And that's when I'm with you guys. But see, I take you guys over cake. That's how, that's how much you mean to me. If you take them over chocolate pumpkin brownie muffins. Possibly. I don't know. I like you guys, but I'll wait because you don't want to see that in my teeth. That'll, that'll be my reward for finishing. All right. So it looks like what we got here, we have a repeating thing. A, 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 an, an, a re okay. <laughs> Inside this level, I guess, we have a couple things going on. We have these windows. We also have this solid parts, got some arches inside of arches. So it looks like that happens three times in the middle and then on either end. Um, it does repeat up to uh, and then between that it looks like we got some columns. So what my thought here is going to be is Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it's not seven equal breaks because we have columns on the outside edge. So maybe what we do is break these to the columns. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna divide it. One, two, three, four, one less, there we go. Mm. I have an idea about the material. If you do a save as and then go back to your picture where you, or go back to the other file where you had the picture proportional and standing up, you could actually bring that image in and project it from the original, if it's worth the time. That is true. It might not be worth the time. I'm not sure. Because this quality is pretty rough. It is, it is not good. Wait, I did that wrong. I did something very wrong. <laughs> undo, undo, undo. Pull out. All right, let's try it again. Divide. So I kind of forgot what I was doing, I think. Um, so I want the breaks should be at the window sections. There we go. So that's better. And we are going to have to deal with distortion. You're right. They're, they're not round columns. They appear. I shouldn't say anything like that with authority, but based on the incredibly low resolution picture I pulled off the internet and don't know where it came from, it does look like they are some fancy shape that's not just half a circle. All right, so this is where we will be modeling off the spirit of what's there. We have a request for higher quality <laughs> image. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things we could do is we could actually just pull in a separate reference image. This is where, we've done this before too. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Um, well, for one thing, at this point, I'm going to fill this back in with our, uh, our default material. Nope. Get back to white. And then, uh, oh, 
Oh, that's not going to be right either. Hold no. on. Come back to that. Yeah, um, the image is gone. We're going to have to pull it in. If you do a save as, then you should be able to pull it in from the previously saved model. Or one of the other things I, I do enjoy doing. Uh, oh, Ryan yes. pointed out that the columns are actually concave. Blueprints are good. <laughs> Bl Bl Blueprints are for the weak. Um, let's mm -hmm. see. Let's get this guy and bring him in. Ooh, match photo. Kinda. Oh, nah, that, that image, is not, that's not the one. Right, let's try that again. Oops, wrong button. All right, let's, let's just bring in the same one we have right here. We're just gonna throw it on the back. Do a background image, nice right in front, position to the far left, as big as we can get it. Mm. All right, so now we at least have an, of course it's right behind my head, but it looks good on my screen. Here, just slide over like that. Yeah, that's gonna work. Um, we could probably actually make it work on the other side. Yeah, we'll make that work. We'll make it work. All right, so we got a little bit of a reference there, but if we look at this, pull this right over here for close-up examination. Um, so it does look like they do come out. I, I agree, they look like half a hex. I think maybe we'll go with that. Um, but what I can't quite tell is if we have a full column here before this next one starts. Because um, if so, that throws off what we just tried to do here. So what we could do is we could go in here and say one of these is two feet wide. So we'll come in here. Whoops, don't erase it. Come in here like this. And I'm just going to come right here on the ground. I'm going to draw a polygon with six sides. I'm going to draw it on the side for one foot. Then I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to make this a component. Whoop. And I'm going to put it right here. And come into this and I can pull that up. All right, so for right now, Let's see how that works. If I take that option, I'm going to copy it over here, divide by seven, that gets me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like they all match one, up two, with three, a section four, above five, it. Six, I wonder seven, if it would be eight. easier to start with a section above and then just kind of continue it down. Well, as long as we pick a spot, I don't know if it matters which one we <laughs> start with. Because um, what we'll do is just take this, all of this will end up getting copied mm -hmm. up and down. Um, it does look like each of these has a little bit of a, a head at the top. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to offset this out. Oh, say four inches. down. I'm going to grab this shape. All right, something like that. Um, I'm going to go into this though. I have geometry sticking out the back right now. So I'm going to come in here squirrel there. Whoa, stuff's happening. All right, so that, 
Whoops. Something's not breaking. Oh, this is not. Okay, we distorted some things. We, come on guys. All right, that's okay, we can fix that up easy enough. Stuff got crazy. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Do the same thing here. Oh, let's get rid of these interior lines. All right. So that is our column to begin with. Again, we can model to one level of detail, and we can go in and we can put put more in, uh, more uh, detail as we as we keep working through here. I do want to grab this plus all of these columns right here, and I'm going to make that into a new component. Um, I'm going to call this a level or something with those letters in it, apparently. There we go. We're going to call that a level. Um, yeah, I did see that that is a nice image that you you uploaded we might so if i go hop over here ooh that is a good image ooh <laughs> that ooh look at that it's so bright mm. got a, got some bright blue over there and uh wow mm, you can add whatever shadows you want and it'll look pretty realistic yeah, man, that looks nothing like what I got off that other image. <laughs> so it actually looks like, and I know somebody said they go in, but it looks like what we actually have is this stays almost flat and then steps in, steps in, steps in multiple times, and then the window's inside that. That's cool. Wow. Well, that's yeah, so we're all the way down here. Yeah, we're not going to get this detail, but we're going to put something in. <laughs> Sorry, Titus. Make you wait on that. I know, I, I don't know if you guys saw at the very beginning, I did have a, a low-quality copy of the original blueprint, but uh, we could probably refer to it as being unusable, and that would be fair. Someone's pointing out that the columns are actually triangular instead yeah. of half hexes. They do. So all right, I'm going to go back to my original effort and divide this so that I have eight sections. One, two, three, four, five, oh. six, seven. I think there's, are there seven windows? I think there's seven windows. Uh, let's see. Or not seven windows, One, but two, seven One, two, like, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven. You're right. Yeah. What did I just do? All right. Eighth tries a charm, guys. We got this. All right, let's go to seven sections, seven divisions. I honestly, what I get caught up on, what I always end up forgetting is that I'm making the number of lines, not the number of points. All right, so that's what we actually want. Now, if we look over here, um, looks like it's, Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to do a couple things. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, six inches. I'm going to do both. Some stuff's going to go in and some stuff's going to go out. I'm going to take this. Take that. And this was extra. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it right here. Whoops, no. Never had that happen where you start to move something for whatever reason, your mouse hand just gets tired and goes and uh, <laughs> slides in the wrong direction. All right, I'm going to grab then the centers of each of these. And again, we're not going to be as detailed as the real as real Ben, but I'm going to take those and 
bring them out. Yeah, six inches sounds good. So we're going to start with that shape. Now, if I look in here, I got three different things going, or two different things. So this one is kind of a, looks like they all kind of have an offset push-pull kind of thing in to get them to this original square shape. And then these four have then arched windows inside where these have some additional details. So let's do that. I'm going to start by doing an offset of that much. And yeah, I could component this, but apparently I'm not gonna. And I'm going to push that in, let's say two inches. And because it just be, whoop. Why? Why are you arguing with me? Huh. I was just going to talk about how nice double click is, but it's uh, choosing to go the other direction. All right, so there we go. Um, uh, and that actually save requests. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent plan. All right. Um, And I'll do another, do another course like that. Double click each time. All right, and for our purposes, that's gonna be the level of detail we're gonna to go to right now. Um, all right, that looks, that looks all right. So if we look at the two different details here, so you have this one and it does, re it looks like it, so there is a little bit of a difference from one to the next. These ones, these, so this one is one style, this next course and the one above are a slight variation and then this one above is totally crazy, but we'll still use the, this, the geometry to start off uh, will be the same. So what we got in here is two panels uh, divided into three pieces. The two bottom pieces are bigger, top one smaller, and then we got some arcs in there, arches in there. Um, so I'm going to make something like that. So I'm going to go offset this. I'm using two inches for this for the most part, and I'm going to come in here, come down three feet, and I'm going to go like this, drop down two, and then go to the middle, drop down two, and then I'll take all of that like that, and like that, and like that, and then I will push pull this back in again. All right, now. We got some, some more stuff happening. Uh, actually, so I'm going to unpush pull because I have this going on. And I put in a single line, but I actually, obviously, whoops, I super zoomed. All right. Uh, so I'm using two inches here as this break. So I'm going to come over here, come over, whoops, not two inches, but just one inch. and drop that line straight down. And then same thing, come here one inch over, take that line straight up. I can actually get rid of those extra lines. Kind of like making a window. I'm just drawing some mullion kind of things. All right, so from here, this is where we got some arch stuff happening. And these are not symmetrical arches, so I'm gonna actually use my Bezier curve to come in here and I know we talked about this last week. I am aware <laughs> that we got Gothic arches have some very specific dimensions to them. I, I got that. Um, apparently I'm blowing it off. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to offset it also two inches. And this, oops, nope, just this, two inches. I can get rid of these extra lines here. 
And then I can grab this and this and copy it to here. And grab both of these. Option copy that up to here. Take that down to here. And then I can do some clean upping. Cleaning upping. Clean some clean up. No need for extra ing at all. All right. Sweet. Aaron says it took 13 years to build the tower. Christopher says it would have taken less time, but they kept stopping for tea. But I'm pretty sure that that's how they got the quality. You know? Too true. Uh... All right, so I'm going to take that and I'm gonna push that back. I'm just going to do everything in increments of two. Just because. Just then six push pulls on each level. Double click. Whoops. Oh, ruined it all. Ah, there we go. Uh, all right, so there we go. That's that one section. What I'll do now is I'll actually, so that's going to go here, here, and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that piece that I want. I see how good I can get this with a space mouse and a select window. Ooh, boom. That's pretty good. All right. No big deal. All right, I'm going to grab that from the corner, option to copy it, and then I'm going to just put it here. I can actually just type x2, because the next one should be the same dimension away, and we got that. Cool. That That'll work for right now. Now, I'm going to save. Ding. Still working on getting that... Uh, you know, web pull device where you guys can smash buttons to make it save for me automatically. It just hasn't <laughs> happened yet. The remote save extension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, now we need some windows. So let's hop back over to here. So what we got here is, and oh, buddy, am I going to simplify this. There is some serious detail. We could get in here really tight. Um, but I'm going to make an arch and an arch. I apologize to the architects who did an amazing job on this, but uh, I'm not going to go this much deep. And it's not for a bad reason. Actually, doing something like this uh, section right here, that might be fun, but we could spend probably three hours just doing that detail, which maybe that's a fun thing. If you guys would be interested in doing that, modeling some, uh, you know, some gothic detail work, I don't know. Somebody would have to... Somebody who knows would have to come in and actually tell me what that's called, but we could actually spend a Friday just doing like a blow up of this kind of thing. That could be kind of cool. Now, if you guys remember Alejandro's, uh, his ornate column cap that we, we looked at last time, we could do something like that if you want. Just let me know, let me know of the level of interest. So for right now, for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in uh, just a couple arches. It looks like they pretty much align with these ones over here, so we'll, uh, we'll simplify this. Um, because it does look like, all right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to, hmm, what am I going to do? I don't even know. It's going to be something, whatever it is. This is neo-neo-gothic. That's right. That's right. It's newer than new gothic. <laughs> all right, we'll do this once and then copy it over. Same, same thing, same way we did last time. We'll grab that and we'll bring it over here. Oops. That'll that's one of the things that bugs me. Forgot to forgot to erase the line. I'm gonna have to run through the whole model and fix that. Alright. So over here, I'm gonna pull some of this stuff back out. Here's where a little planning could have saved me some time, but Hey, we're, we're talking about uh, design, right? I've, I've got to make up solutions as I go sometimes. Oh, man, I missed another one. <laughs> That's right. Fortunately, I has a fix. All right, so I'm going to do this and get rid of all of this. I think I missed a step. Are you preparing to componentize this? Um, no. I wasn't really thinking about that. <laughs> it's 
a short answer. Um, doesn't mean it's not a good idea. Um, what I was thinking was something like, uh oh, I got too much stuff. Ooh, yeah, look at all those. Get rid of these two edges. There we go. So I want to take this and I want to align this. Oh man, I got something else. What? <laughs> Jeez. How did I? This is a real, real modeling. Yeah. This is how it really happened. Well, you guys know this is. I'm, I'm trying know. to save you from making the same mistakes I made by making my mistakes mistakes in front of you over and over and over again. All right. So, they're about the same arch. Look, they might be a little wider. Oh, I see it. And some a matching the same. I didn't even notice. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. All right. So we'll take that. Modify key to scale about the middle. All right. That's gonna work. That's gonna that's gonna be what we're gonna do. So whether it works or not. Uh, save. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this part's questionable. I might actually just come in here and do away with, with these because that's where that, that higher level of detail, there's some other stuff going on there. I'm gonna do this to differentiate. I got some more. I got. I. I didn't uh, delete the face before I copied, or I did something wrong. I don't know what I did, but I'm gonna clean it up. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right. So now I'm gonna take. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna delete these back faces out, and I can go come in here. Grab this and grab it by this corner. Option copy, option copy. I can't just do an array there because I don't have a full, it doesn't go straight across. What, what, oh, man. I'm not quite sure what happened back here. Try push pull. Whoa. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Make me look dumb in front of my friends. Wow. What even happened? I have no idea. Stuff, that stuff, stuff no. just happened. Hmm. I don't love that. Oh. All of that just happened the way that it happened. Um, so faces, when you go try to close up faces, if you have any geometry inside, it won't close. So something like this where I have geometry inside geometry, I just got to kind of connect the edges together to make it seal itself up. Um, there we go. And I'm going to say orient faces, get everything back. I don't know why that happened. Fortunately, I have several opportunities here to figure it out. delete that one. Or what if I just to delete this bottom piece? What would happen? What would really happen? Ooh, like a nice workaround. Something became broken. I don't know what though. I don't know how. How I how I do what I do sometimes. I just do it and it's it is what it is. Um, okay, so yes at this point a very compelling argument could be made to have done this as a component. <laughs> it would not be a challenge to make that argument. Um, I thought I was just going to copy this over, everything would be good, but I did not take a look at what I was copying before I copied it. So that's probably the lesson learned on that one. If you're going to copy a bunch of geometry multiple times, uh, check, <laughs> check your source. Check, check where you're copying from. All right. Anyhow, all right, we got here. We got to this. Whoa. That's something. Nice. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm going to save that. Um, so that's a component right now. Um, so this goes multiple times onto this building. So once it goes, let me grab it from somewhere. There's a point. Take that straight up. It goes right here. And then another time. goes right here so this is so this is this course right here this is right here this is right here and then we got one more up above like that and then one more below so if I don't have anything to snap to there I'm just gonna just to get it in there though I'm gonna take this I'm just going to drag this down here. Hmm. Okie dokie. Makes a um, save request. Yeah. Um. All right. So that looks okay. What I have to do now, how did I miss that? It totally blew off that. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I kind of blew off some of these dimensions right here. So like this one right here is the bottom of that piece. I didn't put that in. I didn't put this one in at all. So I'm just gonna trace these real quick. I remember talking about six foot six, but I just didn't draw it apparently. Um, all right, so that's what I'm gonna put in there. The reason, when I go into a group, everything else grays out so I can't see it. So putting those references, those reference lines in there allow me to actually come in and put these where they should go. So pull this one up to here. And then this one, I wanna pull down to here, knowing it's gonna get stretched up. All right, speaking of stretching, that's our next thing here. Um, so what I need to do, I need to get, right, so I need to get this in there. I'll get this across here and then I can Erase this, erase this. Because this has negative values so that the faces actually go behind the front of Big Ben. So I could either go in there and cut those things out or in this case, I can just kind of make a, make a place for them, make a, make a space for them. Um, and I'm choosing to do that because I think that's gonna be quicker and easier. Oop, and you know where this goes to. Oh, that one goes to right there, beauty. Like a lot. Come back here and grab this face. All right, so that one's done. And now in these ones, uh, my real question is, what gets stretched? Because I'm looking at that teeny tiny image, but if I look here, All right, I'm gonna do this. I'll come in here. I'm gonna grab from here up and just move it upward. I'm gonna grab from here up and move that upward. Like Noise. that. Uh oh. <laughs> you know. That wouldn't be nearly as upsetting if I hadn't just done that exact same thing on the Great Hall. Oh boy. All right, so I'm gonna grab these two right here and I'm going to make them unique. And then try that again. Grab this section here, move it vertically to here. 
You know, it's a good lesson. It's how not to do it. I, I specialize in that. Yeah. I'm like a living, it's breathing, important. undo command. Everybody needs to learn that. All right, so that, beautiful. This one up here is unique as well because this is its own thing. This is going to have uh, its, its own detail. I'm not using stretch. I'm, I'm intentionally not scaling uh, anybody out there who's wondering because what scale will do is it will destroy my arches. So it'll actually make them go from what is supposed to be the perfect ratio arch, which I didn't know the numbers to, so I didn't do, and it would actually make them look like more like you know sharp points rather than the arches we have now. All right, so that's what we got right now. Ooh, it's looking all right, it's looking all right. It's acceptable, it's in, in an acceptable place right now. All right, so one thing we gotta do, because this is will drive me mad immediately, is get these corners closed up. I, I don't like this open thing right here. So let's take a look at our super high res image. And this actually looks like it rounds. So it does, um, I'm guessing this is an octagon because you kind of have a square that comes out and then points that come out on both sides. So it's, a, mm. it's like two squares. Star. Yeah, exactly. Whatever, uh, like the Star of David is with triangles, this is the same thing but with squares. I don't know if there's a name for that. Oh, Tig's posting on the forum. And get something, something good over there. All right, so I'm curious how big this is. That is five feet. All right, let's roll with this. Let's 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 say five feet. So if I was to come out here, do a little do a little scrawling on the ground here. So if I was to draw five feet, apparently this is how my brain works. When my brain works, I can't use actual tools. I have to <laughs> just draw with lines. Um, that's cool. Like I said before, if you sketch up how you want, right? Apparently, I want to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go to the midpoint of this square. Inference, inference, grab it, option, rotate 45 degrees. I'm going to make this a component. Does anybody know, does this have a name? This shape? It, it looks like it should. It looks like this is not like, I'm 90% sure I'm not the first person who's drawn this shape. But I feel like this An should be octogram. a thing. Octogram. Octogram? Mm-hmm. Is that real or did you just make that up? I Googled it, 8 Fed oh. Star. Well, hey, that's where we get all of our other reference from is Google, so we're going to assume that's right. And I'm going to call this my octogram. All right, we're going to grab that and move it into place right here. All right, so that looks kind of cool. Let me push pull that up. I'm not, I'm not unhappy about this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this component and command X to cut it, and I'm gonna come in here, and what's the best way to do this? Because they're gonna be different heights. I'm doing, I'm kinda, I'm kinda behind the curve ball, or I'm behind the ball here, because I should have probably done this before, but we're working at the speed of design again. So I'm gonna put one there, put one of them, here and put one of them here. This one is going to be unique. This one, if I was to push pull it up to the top, I would see like that. And you'll notice I only did it at one corner because if I close out of here, the component on this side is going to fill in the opposite oh, corner. Smart. So I got to do it once. Work smarter, not dumber. No, harder. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Um, let's see, that'll work for right now. Of course, there's detail in here, always. Um, it looks like we got one of these like arch thingies carved into every single face. 
of that uh, octagram. They were drinking a lot of tea at the time. Man, that's just got to be arching. Do the arches align? No, they don't. That's that's good news for me. Okay, so we head into our octagram, close everything else. We take one of these sides. We'll do, we'll take these two, make them into a component. Get rid of everything else. Copy it to one corner times seven. Go all the way around. And actually, we don't even need all of these because we only really need this face, this face, this face, this face, this face. Unless we get rid of half of it. We can get rid of this piece. Ah, I'm just going to put it all the way around in case I forget which way it's going. I could mess that up. All right, so I'm going to go into this now. And let's see. We're going to offset this two inches just like we did before. We push pull this only in one inch though because I, that's one foot. Only one inch because I don't want to run into the other side. Um, that would be disastrous, I think we can all agree. I mean, maybe not disastrous, but it wouldn't be good. All right, so it has one, one of these... Uh, Little gothic archy things, technical term, is right about there. And then the other one looks like it splits in half. So I'm going to make this one like this. All right, and then same thing I did before. I'm going to offset this by another two inches. Two inches, two inches. And I'm going to take this one and move it up so I have an even two inches there. And then same thing down here. I'll grab this one and move it up. So we have even two inches there. Then we just got to throw an arch on here, copy the arch, copy this side to the other side, and then our entire octogram will be done. All right, so I'm going to draw another bezier. Bezier, there we go. I just hit draw a line. Bezier, third tries charm. There to here. All right. Going to offset this. Copy it. Rotate 180 degrees. And then again, like I did before, offset this two. And offset this two. And now I'm going to grab this and this and just copy it. Option. Click here, option, click here. And now I can do whatever cleanup I feel is necessary. Um, and then last thing, I'm just going to push pull these in. I'm going to do an inch again, just for uniformity's sake. All right, so now we have that one side drawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see, well it's 90 degrees, right? So I don't have to worry about remembering what that is. I should be able to just take all of this, option copy, rotate it 90 degrees. If we click out, we should have awesomeness. Ooh, that's it. All right, super cool. Um, this one was different, we made this different. I just put this up here as a placeholder. I'm actually gonna delete that, grab this one from down here and move it straight up. Um, 
this top section. Oh, nope, hold up. Oh, oh, you guys thought I was going to do the stupid thing again, but I didn't. Right click and make unique. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to grab this, same thing I did before. Take the top up. I haven't exploded it yet. Each of these pieces is still separate right now. Um, come in here, grab this, move this vertically, snap it up to here, like that. And then what I think we got going on in here is this geometry right here. I copy that and move that to like right there. Because you made that a component, I click out, and that's all done. All right. Ooh, looking good. Um, I want to make a change to my style real quick after I save. All right. And I'm going to come in here to my style, and I'm going to get rid of my profiles. Just got too many lines. It's looking too dark, too dense. Oh, baby, that. That's looking good. All right, that's awesome. Um, so one of the things we got going here is there's definitely a ledge. BJ asked if you saved. I did. I just saved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Christopher. Thank you, BJ. Thank you, everything. Hey, good to see you again, BJ. Welcome back. Walks in all casually and tells me to save. You think you are, pal. All right, no, good to have you here and I always appreciate the reminder. Uh, okay, so we do have like a, uh, a little shelf coming around here and it does go all the way around the building. So you can see here, and it, it does follow all of these, uh, uh, all the shapes. So I'm thinking just for the fun of it, maybe we'll do this with follow me but I'm gonna to have to commit to some geometry to make that work. Um, what the heck did I just do here? I thought I made it unique. Undo, 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 undo. What did I do? Arrow. <laughs> All right, nested component time. This was made into a unique instance or a unique component. So here down here, we have Octogram. Right here, we have Octogram 2. Inside of Octogram, <laughs> we have <laughs> Octogram side, which is the same in every one of our uh, big corner pieces. Uh, so when I came through here and I grabbed it and moved it up, I, uh, I didn't save myself any time at all, it was, it, that was dumb. So I need to grab this, make it unique as well. Then I can take this, and I can come in here. Now I can grab this, oh man. Well, it's still easier what we did on uh, Notre Dame, Let's, I'll say that. Option, and we'll put that up right in the middle. And same thing I did before in here close the face and then and that's not that's not it's not doing anything wrong I didn't actually select a face here I just liked all the outside edges when I copied it up uh, it copied the edges it didn't have a face there because there wasn't one because the face was the whole whole big thing so it looks like you only selected one to make it unique sure did all right let's exit out here let's grab oh this is gonna be fun watch this ready ready for some Ooh. You're gonna get some ninjiness. I'm gonna grab all of these pieces. And I'm gonna go to my component browser. I'm gonna go find this octogram side one. Mm. Then all these that are selected, I'm gonna right click on octogram side, hashtag one, and say replace selected. Ooh, pro tip ah. right there. And with that, you could hopefully leave.
feeling like you've learned something today. Um, all right. It's looking good. Let's save. Someone suggested that making the lines a light gray can make it look mm -hmm. prettier. That's not a bad idea. You guys saw I did come in here to my styles and I turned my profiles off because that definitely helps. It also speeds up the render. I don't know if you guys know that, but uh, redrawing the lines, every time, every time I spin this in 3D, uh, SketchUp is running and constantly figuring out what do I draw on the screen? What do I draw on the screen? So every time it moves, it has to redraw everything. When Profiles is turned on, it says, okay, when you redraw everything, find out where the edge of, where two pieces meet together an edge is basically the edge of what you can see. And if it's the edge or outline of what you can see, draw it thicker. Draw a separate line over the existing line to create that profile view. Um, so it basically draws everything, then checks everything, and then draws again. So profiles, if you have a heavy model with a lot of geometry and a lot of lines, and it's starting to lag a little bit when you start spinning in 3D space, try to turn that off and see if that helps. All right, that looks pretty good. And yeah, so, so as was suggested, if I grab this black, and maybe we'll go to like a, a, a lighter gray. Ooh. Ooh, it's like designing in the mist. Mist is like a thing that they have in uh, the UK too. That's that's definitely the London fog. Appropriate, yeah, that's a thing. All right, so um, let's figure out what to do now. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I want to draw that little shelf ledge type thing but I'm not quite sure I'm ready to commit to my components just yet. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, well, I don't know. I'm so torn. Um, all right, I, I'm just gonna do it. I am just gonna commit to, I'm so scared. I'm just gonna, All right, I'm gonna do one level at a time. We're gonna start at this top level. I'm gonna take these two pieces and I'm gonna make them into a single component. Call this the top level, or no, we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, level five. All right, now I can go into level five and I'm gonna grab these two pieces and explode them and then explode them again all right now I'm down to G no hold on back up one step I'm not gonna explode all of them because first I'm gonna delete these three pieces because I don't need them on the back now I will grab and explode every time I explode I wish SketchUp had sound effects <laughs> All right, there we go. Super. All right, now what I wanna do here is I'm gonna create this shelf looking thing. Comes out, goes up. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Something like this. I'm going to draw a working plane. So I'm just going to. I like that gray line. Who who suggested that gray line? That was that was nice. Alberto Badillo. Thank you, Alberto. I like it. Or Badillo, depending on what language you speak. All right. I'm going to say that is. My, uh, it's hard to tell the, with the light, it's hard to tell exactly what that, that looks like, but I'm gonna say that's it. All right, I want this to trace on part, but not all of this. Um, if I hide the rest, this is what I'm looking at. I don't actually want this to go around to the inside because that's unnecessary. Um, so I'm gonna grab it like this. And you know what I do, I am gonna take this a little bit further. I'm. 
I want this to go a little bit farther this way. So what, I, what my challenge is now is really what I want this to do is start right here and then go around to here. That's what I'm actually looking for it to do. So I can double click to select the surface. I can hold down shift and pick this one. And then what I'll do is I'll turn off the surface and turn off these extra edges that I don't want to trace with my follow me. Um, I think I'll bring it back here. And now with those selected, I can say follow me and pick the ah, hold up. Just in case something goes wrong, I'm going to make this into a group first. And then I'm going to double click, shift click here, 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 and here. Get my path reselected. Hit follow me. And of course, if I hover over the group, it says it doesn't highlight, it doesn't, I can't use it. But if I right click, I can say uh, edit group, and I'm still in the follow me command. I click right here, something went wrong. It picked, <laughs> it picked the geometry that didn't have highlighted. <laughs> Come on, follow me. All right, let's try that again. All right. Turn this, this, this off, this off, this on. Follow me. Right click, edit group. All right, maybe we'll lose the group, see what happens here. Nope, next blue. Well, that was supposed to be really cool, but wasn't. Try that again. All right, select my lines again. Follow me. All right. I don't think it likes that your end line is attached to all the other lines. Yeah, let me try this. Let's start. Whoa. Let's try starting right here and see what happens. Well, people are saying stuff. Is somebody somebody straightening me out here? Yeah, nope. click the positive side. We'll try that. We'll try that too. We'll change a whole bunch of things because that's how the scientific principle works. It changes as many things as possible and then mm -hmm. test again. So out of a group, on the edge, from the right side. Hey. All right, so let's close and see how that, let's see how that looks with the others. This is my, my question is, how is that going to overlap? Uh, beautifully is how that overlaps. That looks slick. So there is cleanup here at our, uh, these sections where they overlap. We do have some cleanup we'll have to do. Not a big deal. We can make that happen. Um, and we only have to do it once, again, because we, we're, it's on the corners. Um, I'm going to undo that, undo that, undo that, and I'm going to do it one more time, but this time I am going to put this in a group because I should be able to grab this same group and just copy it down level to level. So I'm going to make it a group. I'm going to do the same thing, double click, then shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, and shift click. Follow me. Right click, edit group, click. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alberto was right again. Alber Glad Double gold star. Glad Alberto came. Next week, Alberto will be modeling. <laughs> Save this middleman stuff. All right, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna leave this level. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab these. Make them a component, level four, go into level four, paste. Let's see, we'll grab this and stick it right. You guys ever get this where, where what you're copying covers up what you're trying to, the point you're trying to copy to? It can be pretty frustrating. Really, the best solution is just get a new v angle on it. So in this case, I'll come to underneath and click right to it. Uh, it's frustrating, but I try not, just not to spend time on it. Just look at it from somewhere else. All right, make another component. Working our way down. Level three. 
paste again. And again, we will grab that right there. And again, not let me pick that point. There we go. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got down to here. Uh, so that works on those levels. We obviously got to fill in these, these middle sections. Um, ooh, we got to get a move on. I still got to get a clock face on this thing. Um, out here, this is going to be a different profile because it's going to trace around here. So uh, let's do this. I'm just going to grab this, explode it. And I'm going to get this like that to here. And then I'm going to bring this around just with lines. I'll try to do some fancy selection to get my path this time. And what I don't have, I'm going to paste this right here, because what I didn't grab was this face. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come over here. I guess I should have grabbed that from a different orientation. Ah, that'll still work. I'm going to rotate that. Whoops, nope, rotate it from the blue axes. 90 degrees, and we'll make it a group again because I want to copy it down to the level below. Grab it. I really want to get this face done and give myself a solid hour plus to put the, uh, or I want to get this base done so I have a solid hour to put the clock face on. All right, I'm going to look straight at it and I'm going to try to do a selection of just that path. That was precision selection. All right, follow me. Right click, edit group, pick the face. Wow. There we go. Grab that group. Just take it and we will. Wait a minute, didn't, that didn't work. Ah, oh, too many lines. All right. That's what I get for bragging about my precision selection is I selected too many lines. All right, try that again. Select that. Problem was mm. I had these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down both the option and the shift to give myself the minus key. And that's going to make it real quick and easy to just go in and deselect. Oh, man. I really felt good about myself for about three seconds. All right, there we go. There's my path I want to follow. Follow me. Right click, edit group, click. Ah, there we go. That's the stuff. All right, now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it vertically. Option to copy, drop it straight down to there. And right. save. And save. Excellent plan. How does that look with all of the four sides? It looks kind of... It's, it's all right. All right. Um, so uh, it does look like we actually have these shells at the top and bottom. That's good. I'm going to copy those real quick. That way all we got to fill in is this, this, and a little detail on our little... Uh... <laughs> First try. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to move this. I'm going to make a copy of this straight up here. Try going down here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. Right here. I'm going to go this and just go one of these at the top as well. So it's not going to be the most architecturally accurate, but it's going to have a lot of details of uh, debatable accuracy. All right, 
I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a slight change because I'm going to take uh, these two right here and I'm just going to move them vertically so they're sticking through the top. And by moving just these two faces, it's going to grab all the connected geometry and, and pull it up. So I don't have to go in and select the face because if the two sides move, then the, the piece in the, that connects it moves as well. All right, save that. Now what I'm thinking for these sections around here, what I'm thinking of doing is coming up with a single detail, one piece that just fills in this, and then I can just array it, and then stretch it, stretch it. I mean, because it's, honestly, it's a bunch of detail that we're, we, I just won't have time to do today, so um, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna start by, uh, I'm gonna put a rectangle, what am I? I'm not even in the, let's get in at least this far. All right, let's erase this. Erase this. Uh, this one will be a little different. All right, so this one right here. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle like that. Put another rectangle right there, and a third rectangle right here. All right, and I'm gonna offset this. Offset two inches again. Two inches, two inches. We'll push it back in one inch, one inch. Just to give myself some relief, a little bit of texture right in there. And then here's what's actually happening. So this is what I was saying. This could make a fun one time. <laughs> this could make a one time or a three hour model just for this detail. Uh, for what we're doing, um, we might be there. Uh, maybe I'll do a, another offset. We'll do another like a three inch offset and push that back in an inch. All right, that's what we're gonna do for our detail. I'm gonna grab all that. Make that a component. Uh, we'll call this uh, mid level detail. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm going to take that. I'm going to move it. Option, copy it over here. Uh oh. Something didn't happen. All right, Command X, come in here, uh, edit, paste edit, paste in place. place. It's one of my absolute oh, favorite. Yeah. Anybody who's ever made a mistake techniques. ever should appreciate paste, paste in, in place. place. It's essential. All right, one, two, three, four, five, X, five. There we go. Uh, nope, something didn't go right there. I did not copy that straight. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over to the end. So I'll actually go from here. Let's try that again. Option, click two here. Two, three, four, five, six, X, six, or six X. I get called out on that sometimes. I don't have a shortcut key assigned to X. So when I copy, I type X six. If you have a shortcut key, when you hit that X, it's gonna run the shortcut. So the better way to do it, the, the more, you're safe no matter what is to type 6x rather than x6. But uh, yeah, I don't, I didn't, I didn't do that good. All right, I'm gonna grab this whole array, option copy, bring it up right here, option copy, bring it down here, option copy. right here and get rid of this face. All right, and then some stuff happens down here. All right, so each of these layers is actually a different height. These two might be the same. These are the same, so I can leave those. These two I'm actually going to, I could grab it right now and I could scale it and just go vertically like this, but that's gonna end up distorting stuff. So 
right here where this line should a align. I can see that came up because that was the, uh, it's distorting it because of, of uh, scale. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna grab this array right here, make unique, and then go into one of these, grab it by the top, and then just move that one vertically, and I'm gonna click out, there we go. All right, same thing here, grab all of these, whoops, grab all of these, right click make unique, click into one, grab the geometry at the top, and move it vertically to there. All right, it's coming together. It's all coming together. Well, the bottom half is coming together. All right, so that, whoops, I didn't quite get there. Man, I gotta stop saying defin definitive statements because every time I do, I find out I made a mistake. All right, so the other thing um, on here is we need to make something to fill in these corner spots. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in, make a rectangle from here to here, and a second rectangle from here to here. Offset by two inches, two inches. Push that in one inch, push that in one inch. Grab all of that make it a component, call it the corner detail, and I'm gonna grab it, option. I'm not gonna do an array because there's, there's only a couple of these and uh, it should only take a second to grab these and copy them. Nice thing about when you start copying things like this, uh, every time you do it, you should be copying twice as much geometry. Oh, so close. All right. Because I copy one to two, then I can copy. There we go. That looks pretty sweet. All right. So I'm going to come in here, grab these, make them a group, and copy them. And then paste it. All right, having that snap problem again. Let's try the other side. Perfect. All right, here, it's still gonna work. We're definitely immediately gonna have some intersecting geometry. Not a bad thing, but it is a thing. Um, so I'm gonna stick this right here. I'm going to right click and make it unique. Actually, no, I'm not gonna make the group unique because it's a group. I'm gonna come in here and grab all of these, make unique. Then go into one of them, grab this geometry right here, and drop it down vertically to right there. And that's how that'll go. Okay, we're coming, it's all coming together. Um, I'm thinking that this is just raw geometry, so what I might do here, we're past the point of no return. <laughs> I'm gonna grab all of this and I'm going to explode it because much as I love component modeling, um, I just wanna get this part done, so I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna off do the two inch Offset, and do that on all of each of these pieces. Two inch, two inch, two inch. I'm not gonna worry about them. Two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch. And then I'm gonna just push those in one. That's not enough, huh? We need more detail than that. That's not gonna work. 
Um, something didn't happen here. Oh, I didn't explode this one. Let's back up a little bit. It looks like it's almost the exact geometry as the panel next to it. And if you could just copy it. Ooh, that's an idea. Let me explode. Let me explode a couple things because I want to clean up this this geometry right here too. Um, so I'm going to grab this, say intersect face with selection, and that's going to give me lines here. Also means I can come back here and delete this. Um, all right, there's lots of cleanup I could do back here. I'm going to skip a lot of it because I want to get to that clock face, but know that that would actually be probably what I would do right now is I would spend time uh, doing my, my SketchUp ASMR and just dragging my eraser tool through back here and getting rid of all this extra geometry so I end up when I'm finally done with one solid shell. Uh, same thing to do this one over here because I don't have that geometry I can't intersect with selected but if I right click both of these or click both of these and say intersect face with model even though those other pieces aren't visible, it still breaks it. So I can just go like this, and I get that, that break. So when I come out here, everything breaks there. Same thing over here. I could grab all this geometry, right click, intersect face with model. That's going to break those panels, even though that, that other section isn't visible. Um, so I could. Again, if, if my goal was in the, fi in the end one big solid mass uh, rather than a bunch of overlapping groups, I could do that. And then, like I said, when I close out of this group, that'll all tuck together nice. Uh, same thing, I would do the same thing for these two pieces meeting at the corners. Uh, but right now, moving on. Um, all right, so let me look real quick. Oh man, come on, the trim stops right here. Oh, you're killing me. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do something like this. <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna look like, but we're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, that sounds good. Put that top over here. Push this back like this. Uh, then we'll grab. Oh, let's go straight across. And like that. And then we can just actually just push it horizontally easier, wouldn't it? Push this all back to the face. Delete all this. Actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this line right here to break that. And that way, when I offset this face, and I can push this in. Offset again two inches. Push it in again. Something like that. And then uh, I'll just do the same thing over here. Uh, so push-pull stops you as soon as you hit another surface. So what you're best off doing is starting with the shortest surface and then pulling the other surfaces in. That way it's not going to say, you know, limited to like that until it actually gets back to the final face. All right, there we go. It's a lot easier when you have some idea of what your plan is. All right, so I'm going to offset two inches, push this in two, offset again. I'm going to push that in one the second time. So I'm just going to do some super fast push pulls to wrap up this tower. Offset some push pulls, offset some push pulls. Oops. Uh oh. I didn't want to do that one.
oops, one. Sometimes delete and enter key are too close to each other. Anybody else ever realize that? Seems like a poor design of a keyboard. I know I'm not alone in that. All right. And then I think I did a double offset here. Yeah, so I'll offset these face ones a second time. And I'm going to go ahead and put the arches in here. Um, I'm just going to offset this in this far. All right. So that's the base of our Big Ben for right now. Uh, and for right now, I mean forever because I probably not go back down to do anything at that matter. Save. All right. Um, I do still want my, my corner pieces, my, my quarter pieces, because I don't want to uh, have to do this from here up more than once. So as much exploding as I have done, I'm not going to do any more than that until we get in here and clean this up or finish this up. So with that, I'm going to step in here to the face and we're going to have to bring this in. So I'm going to grab this, this image right now. Actually, it's because it's not an image. Um, well, I'm not really tracing dimensions anymore. Anyhow, well, I'll just, I'm going to cut it, come in here to context, and then I can say edit, paste, and place again. Now I can actually see this while I'm in there because it's not grayed out because it's not outside of the group. All right. Um, so the biggest thing here, obviously, is this. Okay, um, I'm going to bring this forward too. I'm going to move it so it's level with the face. Remember, it's level with the back section, but I'll pull it forward. And I can come in here and do this and do this. And then I'll do a rectangle. Actually, first I'll draw one more line here, and then I can do a rectangle from the middle. Option to go to the center and pull that out in a square until it snaps. And that right there is our Big Ben face. Sounds like an insult to somebody. You're a Big Ben face. <laughs> Not a good look on a human. All right, so we have a couple things going on here. If I drop this down, take this up. Oh, we got a lot of detail. Oh, man. All right, what we, what we got now? like an hour and a half-ish, something like that. There's so many things going on. Um, um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna point this out. Tig on the forum called me out that <laughs> it is not actually called Big Ben. He did tell us that it is the Elizabeth Tower, which I did not know that, but I did know the bell was the Big Ben, so you guys can back me up that I said that at the beginning so next time you see Tig, while well, you guys are walking around Big Ben, somebody let him know. And did you see my response on the phone? I did. Katya yeah. covered us and mm -hmm. said, uh, we, we, we acknowledge that we're stupid Americans, basically. That's what she said. Something along those lines. All right. Um, all right. So I'm just going to draw some reference lines on here. These are just straight up giving me an idea of where things are on here. Uh, and which pieces got to go where. Not going to be able to get in as much detail as I want to get in, which is a bummer, but uh, we'll get a bunch. All right, so right here, I'm going to offset this just a teeny bit. And then I'm going to, it's hard to tell what, what's, what's positive, what's negative on here, but I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to, whoops, push that in uh, just a little bit, just to give myself a little relief. Those those levels, that's what makes stuff look like it's real. And I'm going to put a circle in. I'm going to bump my sides of my circle to 48. Just to get a little bit or a little bit higher fidelity. And I'm going to put it at the center and bring it not quite all the way up. So all the way up be like that. I'm going to drag it down just a little bit because if you guys saw there's a little bit of detail around the clock. So That'll be our actual face. I'm going to take that and push it in a touch like that. 
And then here, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to go in and do all the, uh, what it's, what's it called? Uh, scroll work, basically. Why doesn't it offset from both sides? Um, because of this gap. It's, if I do this, I'm actually selecting two edges. So it's, it's only going to look at, offset only looks at the most outside boundary of what you have selected. So it's not going to offset mm -hmm. in and out at the same time. So <laughs> thank you, Christopher. I enjoyed that. He, Christopher on Morin, <laughs> Christopher Morin on YouTube referred to us as stupid coffee slurping yanks. <laughs> I know we are, our tea game is so off here in America. It's just, mm. it's, it's terrible. To be fair, I have a cup of tea in front of me right now. You got that. So take that. But still, yeah. But it's pumpkin spice and it's really sweet. So I don't think that's really the same thing. No. That would not probably satisfy most, you know, so, so one of the things that Americans call themselves, something weird's going on right here. Look at this. Mm. This is, uh, there we go. So Americans refer to themselves as red blooded Americans. You guys have all heard that, right? Do British people have something along those lines that they like to, I don't understand what red blooded means. I mean, well, I, I don't know how anybody is not red-blooded, I guess. If so you're anemic, it's terrible. It's an odd, it's an odd term to me. So I don't know if, if, if anybody out there confesses to be blue-blooded or anything like that. Well, blue-bloods is a thing too, but anyhow, time to not stop talking tea, because pumpkin I'm- Pumpkin spice tea. If you haven't had pumpkin spice tea, you just, somebody's questioned that I'm drinking pumpkin tea. Pumpkin spice. It's a, it's a thing. It's a yeah, thing. it's not made of pumpkins. It's pumpkin flavor. You know, it's, it's the spice that you put in pumpkin pie. Yeah. All right, I'm just, I'm throwing arbitrary details at this point, but we got something like that in there, and then <laughs> this this is one of those times again where uh, this may have just become Aaron's version of Big Ben. Uh, I want something else up here. Just I'm gonna take it and offset it, and then I can just pull this. Is pumpkin spice tea just an American thing? Oh, you know why? Because it's like pumpkin pie, Thanksgiving. That is definitely an American thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not what most people would consider to be a tea flavor. Mm -mm. That's another question. So in addition to uh, the non-red blood that apparently the rest of the world doesn't have, um, everybody else seems to really, like, tea is its own flavor. Like, that's, we, we seem to like to add flavor to black things. Tea. That's a that's a thing. I do like Earl Grey. It's got a little bergamot in it. Bergamot, bergamot, bergamot. I think it's bergamot. Uh, yeah. Burger Meister Meister Burger. Is that <laughs> what you're trying to say? It's a type of a citrus. It's delicious. All right. All right. So I'm again. I'm going back to getting some reference lines in here. All right, so I think that's pretty good. My axes are messing with me, so I'm gonna go turn my axes off because I don't need that blue line in front of my face. All right, so we have, it looks like, so we got something like this. And something like this. And I'm assuming these things come out. Again, a lot of guessing happening here because because that's that's the why. So right here, I got the same thing coming out. Oh, it mm -hmm. actually doesn't go all the way down. I should fix that. Push that back. Push that back. Um, 
the same thing here, but it kind of looks like it wraps around the corner. Yeah, I think it's a six-sided thing. Maybe eight-sided. Well, it's four-sided on my model. <laughs> uh, go like this is neo-neo-gothic. It's all good. And that's right. Pull it out like this, and then we'll go this way, six inches, and then that'll overlap. Almost. All right, so I gotta grab it. Okay, that makes sense. So take that, push that. Uh, but I want it out that much. Oops. Then pull this out, six inches. All right, and that then that detail comes around on both sides. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was I brought this, this into a quarter side. So as soon as I had a mirror dimension moment there, a little. All right, anyhow, let's just stay in here and stop stop with the nonsense. All right, um, I was kidding about stopping the nonsense, by the way. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. It doesn't stop. Nope. All right, so I'm going to take this and push it in. I'm going to try to do this on both sides. Again, I don't want to really componentize this stuff right now. Um, and then down here, I got the same kind of thing going on. This actually will come down like that. This will come down like this. No, this is not here. This is the other clock face. Oh, sure enough. I didn't catch that either. Oops. What? Get back in here. All right. So scratch that. Bring this over. Bring this over. And bring this over. Get rid of some of these other lines. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. All right. That's good. Uh, this will get pushed in. Then that gets pushed in. This gets pushed in. And then I want to take this in like that. All right. And then this is actually looks like a kind of a guardrail thing going around here. So let's let's make that happen. Safety first. That's right. OSHA. I don't know if this is actually a stairway or not, I don't know, or a walkway or not, but uh, just became one in our model. That should go all the way around. Yeah. All right, it does have one, two, three, four, five, six points on here. So I'm gonna go from the center of here to the center of here. I'm gonna take this and divide that so I get one, two, three, six points. And I'm going to bring it up, down like that. I'm going to move that to the next point. And I'm going to spin around like that. I can grab this, copy from the center, to the next point, and then I can say X6. And this N1, I think, actually, well, here. Let me pull these all out first. Oops. Mm-hmm, 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 Looks like this thing
comes up to here. And passed, but I'm just going to run up to here for now. All right. I'll have to send something over here real quick. All right. It's all coming together, kind of. That was cool. Um, I'm going to do this real quick. Gonna offset this ever so slightly and push it in. The key to making things look fancy, pretty much offset and push it, pull. Seriously, that's and, uh, offset, follow me, push pull. And this is going to be weird because this doesn't. Uh, it's cut at an angle, so I'm going to grab. Whoops, I'm gonna grab this. Push this back to here. And then we can actually come in here and get that off the edge there. I'll just trace and erase it. There we go. We just basically did an intersect manually to get rid of that geometry. Whoops, too much. All right. Um, yeah, lots of lots of bonus geometry on here at this at this moment in time. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna actually so I could have gone in and like got fancy with my selection for offsetting, but it's probably easier. Look how easy it is to come back in and just do that rather than having to go in there and like fine tune your uh, selection lines. It's a little bit a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. I should probably do the same thing here. I should probably take that across there and that across there. One last mess to fix. All right. All right, so just as something to talk about as I'm drawing lines from odd directions above and beneath buildings, we just this last week finished up what we were calling our boot camp road show, which was where our staff got to uh, go on site to a couple cities and do some training. It was really cool. Um, we just finished it up, like I said. I don't, know, I don't know if anybody who's on here was there. If so, we'd love to hear from you and hear what you thought of it. But I want to use that as a segue because we have, at this point, announced our next 3D base camp, which will be happening in Vancouver. And uh, you can actually go to our 3D base camp website and get information on that. If you have any desire to get better at SketchUp, which I know you do, um, it is a great spot to take classes from experts. I will call them experts. I don't know, they, they're, they're all humble and wouldn't call themselves experts, but I would. Uh, it's a great way to learn SketchUp and uh, get to know as much as possible about it. So uh, yeah, check out 3D Base Camp if you haven't already. Caught you just through a uh, web address in the comments. You guys should, uh, if you've never heard of it, go check it out. It's, it's a great way to learn and it's, it's everything that is SketchUp all at once. It's, it's pretty super. All right, I'm gonna take this right now I'm just copying this out. I'm trying to save time. This will probably end up, this is one of those times where I'm like, oh, I'll just copy something and save time and it'll probably take me three times as long to do this. But I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna move this down vertically to this height. I'm gonna grab the bottom, pull it up vertically to this height. Nope, to, nope. That height this piece and pull it down to about a third off the ground and then pull this down here all right and now I'm gonna grab all this and make it a group I'm not really concerned about components at this point um, I'm kind of beyond the part where I'm, I'm worried about components 
Um, but what I do want to do is I don't want this to immediately uh, connect to my existing geometry. So vertically, I, sh I should be spot on or close to it. Dang, not spot on. All right, let's grab that. Let's fix that real quick. Slide that up. All right, and then horizontally, I'm going to deform some arches, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. All you, all you gothic arch purists, look away. Well, if you're a gothic arch purist, you probably already left because <laughs> I probably insulted you. Oh, something's I'm wrong. I'm a neo-neo gothic arch purist, and uh, I approve. Uh, I have some extra geometry here. Something here is causing an issue. Ah. Delete. There we go. All right, and I'm just gonna scale that to fill the gap. And then I'll grab this option, copy, stick it right here, and then get rid of that. And I'm just gonna explode both these. All right, um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna steal some more jump. I'm just gonna grab Let's see how let's see how clean I can grab this. Meh. Now what is this thing? Get out. Alright, try that again. I'll grab this. Option copy. Bring it right back down here. And let's see how that looks. All right, because I didn't, uh, I didn't copy the surface, so I ended up with some weirdness here. Uh, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I'm, I'm gonna make them. This is dumb. No, get rid of it. Just undo. Get, just get out. All right, let's try that again. Um, here, let's go grab a nice small version. Oh, let's grab. Let's grab the same thing. Let's select. Uh huh. Uh huh. There we go. Copy it again. Come back out here, and we're going to delete this. I'm going to hit Control V to paste this. Got to spin it back upright again. And this is just one arch. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna come in here and drag over all of this and get rid of it. And down here, let's do a group select, delete, drag over this. And this is going to create a bunch of geometry back behind here. Um, so I'm just going to maybe do a little bit of cleanup this, get rid of all this, and then what I can do is I can grab the bottom right here, slide that vertically, and now if I get rid of all these little guys who are close by, I don't want to select these on accident, when I copy it, or not copy it, but I'll actually select it and stick it in the model. All right, there we go, delete. Get rid of all, whoop. Get rid of all that, delete. All right, now I can just take this, grab by this corner. And this is actually what I did in the other one, so I'm gonna be uniformly Uniformly incorrect with this, but I'll slide this up. All right, some along those lines. And then I'll delete that and then grab.
closing in. We're closing in. All right. Um, I'm going to cheat just a little bit, and rather than doing our fancy detail, I'm just going to pull these out. No, you know what? Let's do it. Let's uh, let's get the same. Uh, Same profile we use down below and stick those, stick it right in here. Come in here and just click in and just grab this face and copy it. And then I'll, <laughs> there's, there's that uh, overabundance of reference imagery slapping me in the face. All right, so I'm going to drop it. Shortcut D. That's right. It is on the same layer now, isn't it? And I'm just going to use push pull since we're basically just going along the line. Uh, I got to come back to that in just a second how to fix that. That's actually not here at all. Get it out. That's okay, I can delete that. Looks like there's actually a bunch of words underneath the Big Ben. I can't read it though. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, there's definitely words there. And they, they say some things, but I, could not make out any of those details, uh, so I didn't. I didn't try. I really didn't. Oh, I didn't it's in Latin. Out. That's why I can't read it. That makes sense. All right, we're gonna go. those uh, little just touches of details on there. Um, we do still have some, a lot of arches here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arches. So we'll do the same thing we did before. Just grab this line, divide. So. Hey, I looked seven it up. segments. The words under the clock face read, I'm not going to try to pronounce that in Latin, but it means, O oh Lord, keep safe our Queen Victoria the first. Makes sense. It's nice. Sentimental. I think she lived a really long time, so. Hey, it worked. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Aaron Powell says, I love SketchUp. That's what it says. We should make our own. Uh, like Latin, I love SketchUp, and put them in 3D <laughs> text underneath there. <laughs> Somebody in England might get a little upset. I don't know. But we already drive on the wrong side of the road, according uh, to them, so it would be par for the course. Yeah. I always thought that, like, America was the only place that drove on the right side of the road, but it turns out there's actually... There's a couple. A couple spots. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. All right, there we go. I'm gonna grab that geometry again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to uh, deselect some of this geometry. I'm just do a big sweep select and then come in afterwards and see if there's anything I have to unselect. And then once that's done, I'm gonna grab it with move, option, copy it over. Actually, first I'm gonna get rid of this. There we go. Now I'm going to do a big group select. And 
and then come in here and do my fine tuning. I'm getting to really enjoy using the uh, deselect window. Let's me be just as sloppy with deselecting as I am with selecting. X6, there we go, that gives us all those. All right, this is looking all right. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know what, now that I did this, I did this nice little shortcut and it turns out I just thought I only kind of half-assed it, but I, I big, big half-assed it. Um, all of this has twice as much detail in it as I put in here. Um, so I'm kind of thinking, what time is it now? Ah, it's only 2.30, my playing time. I'm gonna grab this. I'm, I'm operating under this impression that I'm like running out of time like crazy, but uh, it's not so bad. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wrecking ball this thing. Getting rid of all of it. Turns out the Latin for I love SketchUp is just Amo SketchUp. It's not long enough. So, guess we can do that. I guess that's not going to work. Hey. All right. Go back to that. You know, I wish there was a way to. Uh, Componentize deletion. You know, if there's an easy way to go, delete that same geometry anywhere else you see it. Doesn't work so well with loose geometry though. Fortunately, what I can do, I'm just now realizing, if I just delete these edges to disconnect mm -hmm. this geometry from the rest of the click. model, yeah, I can just triple click and get rid of what did I do over there. Although more components might help. Yeah, I know. I was trying to cut cut corners by uh, just speed inputting, but now I'm realizing had I done what I was intent in intending in initially, that's what I was trying to say. Oh, this is an easy one because I just go select there, delete that. All right, um, I know I could have left that alone and kept working my way up the tower, but man, I really want. Wait, what do I have going on here? Well, it's just that first lip. I... Do I not have? Is it, are these my uniform? Why all the way out to here? Oh, I could have deleted a lot more. All right, that's where it was. Sorry, I confused myself, but we had a discussion and we worked it all out. <laughs> all right, so with that, there we go. Now I got, got stuff gone out of the way. Whoa, apparently that extra line is not an extra line. All right, let's see if I have this as a component still anywhere. I think I pretty much That's all raw geometry. All right, so I'm gonna come in here very carefully. Grab that, control C, control V, and then I'm gonna grab all of it. Put it next to itself. Do some, a little bit of initial cleanup because I actually have a spot I can drop this into. You know, it's funny. Something I learned uh, uh, I learned from a boss many, many years ago. He told me 
that design works always easier the second time. Uh, he was referring, of course, to losing work and then having to redo it, but the point still remains, I think, pretty well. Um, it's a whole lot easier to do something the second time than it is the, the first time. In my SketchUp classes, when people ask me how to make anything, a lamppost or anything, I say, well, first I say don't. You go in a 3D warehouse because someone else has already made it. And then I say, you do it wrong three times, and that's how you learn how to do it right. It's, it's totally mm -hmm. normal. It's just part of the process. It's iterative. First, get your finger hovering over Control-Z. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's better. All right. I'm going to take that down now. Unfortunately, we gotta do this again. What if I can simplify this? Can I just delete these guys? Um, this is self-healing geometry right here. SketchUp goes back and makes sure those surfaces are all clean. I'm gonna grab this right here and slide it down to the bottom. Because then what I can do is I can just grab all of this And delete that because really all I want to do is I want to get these lines and bring them up to right there and then I can just pull these back down to like that all right beauty I grab that option stick it right here Huh, I got a difference of opinion here between my windows. Oh, some crazy zooming going on. I apologize if anybody's getting motion sick. All right, I'm gonna take those. Slide forward like that. Okie doke. All right, that's gonna be that. Um, I'm gonna grab one of those. I basically have that, that same thing. Hmm. Alberto recommends changing your field of view to five degrees. I can't do it. I can't do it, Alberto. I know some people like it. I can't. Hmm. I can't design like that. Does that change how you use the space mouse if you do things like that? Because it seems no, like not really. It's it? it's really just it has more to do with. Uh, um, let's go here. Let's go. Let's go do it. Field of view, and we can type in five. Mm -mm. It's too flat for me. My brain doesn't accept the depth. All I see is a two D drawing, and I can't. Mm. Nope. I can't. Whoa! Seriously, <laughs> I just my eyes just did this thing where it like I, my my eyelid spasmed. That's what you do to me. That's what you did, Alberto. I appreciate all the help you've given me, but you just gave me eyelid spasms. Um, no, I know some people like that. That's that's perfectly cool. That's again, I say this all the time. SketchUp's cool because everybody uses it differently, and that's awesome. Um, I have been working at, I mean, for years when I first started using SketchUp, I didn't know you could change the field of view, so I kind of got used to just using it always with the 35 degree field of view. And honestly, I just have used it so long that way, I have a hard time changing it to anything else. So, um, old dog, new trick kind of thing, I don't know, but uh, I have a hard time, I have a hard time changing the field of view from uh, 35 degrees to something else. I like that, I like that vanishing point. Uh, not everybody does and that's cool. But uh, that's that's what works for me. I tried it. I tried something new today. You guys saw. <laughs> I, of course, I, I said I yelled no and immediately gave up. But I did try it. It's. It might be great for somebody else who's listening. That's right, and that's cool. Go for it. I mean, yeah. that's why we give you shortcut keys and cameras and the ability to do all that stuff. 
All right, I'm trying to recycle here again. Uh, I grab this group from down below because it has the same number of arches as I have up here. So I'm gonna try to stick this in here. Ooh, almost the same size too. I'm gonna scale it. To, whoops, wrong, wrong scale handle. To there, and then I'm gonna scale it up to here. And I'm gonna grab this and delete it. All right. And actually, I'm gonna grab all three of these. And I'm gonna scale it down just a bit because it looks like we have a little bit of a we have a layer right here of some significant amount of detail. Um, yeah, now we're getting ornate. And now is when I'm gonna be very blatant about blowing off some ornateness. I'm sorry. I wanna, I wanna do it, but uh, I also wanna have at least a finished, uh, finished-ish shell of Victoria Tower, which houses Big Ben. That was for you, Tig. All right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna slide it forward. I'm gonna close that up because What I have is some pieces that are not quite uh, right. Uh, my corners are lapping through each other. So I need to give it a little bit more space out here. There we go, that's better. Um, and then I can how long is this? Whoop. Come here. Six inches. So I'll just pull one side out six inches, and then that should close up. There we go. That looks good. That was good. Um, I didn't pull this side out. I just pulled that other edge out. So I'll grab this one. Same thing. I'll pull it out the green axes and pull it out the same distance like that. And then I'm going to put a rectangle right here to close up this side. Another rectangle here to close up that side. Reverse the faces there. See how that looks. I still got some oddness here, so I'm gonna go ahead and, how far is this? Pull this out six inches. Oops. All right, and that should cover me. Nice corner there, nice corner there. All right, I think we're in good shape. Now, we got one more row of some level of detailness. Looks like a gilded cage. It does. I, I'm guessing, and please correct me if I'm wrong because you're, you're smarter and know this thing. I think this is Big Ben. I think that's actually oh, is the, the is bell the itself. Like bell up there? I think so. I don't know. Um, but I think so. I think I that think that right. is where the bell's at. Um, In the detailed picture, I see a bunch of cables and stuff, like pulley stuff. Yeah, I've, I have in read shows. in my exhaustive research I did for this, the minutes I spent prepping, um, that Big Ben is actually not, uh, it doesn't swing with a clapper like a lot of bells do. It actually sits still and is whacked with a hammer. So. Oh, it works just as well. Yeah. Less moving parts, I guess. All right, so I'm just, 
I'm offsetting this so that the uh, corners will meet correctly. Yeah, yeah. And then again, I'll just exit out. Whoop, didn't draw my line. Erased the wrong line is what I did. All right, so now if I hit escape, there we go. So that's meeting up all the way around. Come back in. And here we can, man, there's so much ornate detail up here. It's hard to tell what's what even. It's so cool. Um, even our, uh, our super, let's go, let's go hop back over to our high def image. Mm. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm looking at. I, cause I, it looks like this is basically a wall of vertical members and I can't tell if this thing is out on the corners or if this is the side of this wall side. on the other side. I think it's just the side yeah. on the other side. Oh man, <laughs> there's so much stuff. Uh, uh, Lawrence just showed up. Ugh, we'll forgive you, Lawrence. Thanks for coming. You should try tea, Lawrence. Yeah, we're, we're making... Gray. hot. Well, Katya is making a lot of tea jokes. I won't, I won't take full... I won't. Oh, you missed the whole Captain Picard conversation. Wow, apparently. I don't... I don't even busy, recall it. So... Oh, someone was making fun of me for liking Earl Grey. I said, if it's good enough for Captain Picard, it's good enough for me. Because the script said he had to. Um, uh, uh, Theodore is asking about the eraser key. The default mapping is on the letter E. But of course, it's customizable, so you can, you can change that if you like. All right, so it looks like we got five arches here. So I'm going to do this right now. So those are our one, two, three, four, five arches. <sighs> um, all right, so they they just got they got weird detail, man. It's so hard to. I'm just trying to think of what <laughs> what to do here. Um, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this and turn off the bottom. Oops, wrong button. Offset that down. Copy that across times four. I don't know. I don't know what I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. It's like there's an arch at the Just top, but then there's like another arch in the bottom, things. but then there's an arch in the middle of the bottom uh, one up to the top. I think what's happening is a lot. There is a lot of, a lot of detail. There's a, it looks like, I mean, if you look at this, if we look at the big picture, there is just stuff on top of stuff on mm. top of stuff. And I mean, this is an arch broken by three arches. Mm -hmm. And then I have multiple <laughs> arches inside there. I, like I said, it's, I'm laughing because it is, it's, it's beautiful. It, I mean, mm. this, like I said, this detail right here, I could spend an hour just modeling that thing if I had a good enough picture. Um, so I'm laughing, not, not in a, a negative way, but like, Oh my gosh, what, what am I going to, how could I possibly make this look anything like that? Um, so here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to do another uh, Bezier. It is, it is, an, it is an incredible looking piece of architecture. It is just so cool. I'm going to do the same thing I did down below. It's almost like they spent a really long time on it. Yeah, like 11 years or so. I'm surprised it was that quick, actually. Well, I'm just saying, it's, you know, not that I'm trying to uh, make this into a contest or anything, but we did talk about how long it took to build Notre Dame. It was, it, that was a while. I have no vested interest in either one, not, not competing, but just saying. Of course, this was made in the 1800s. I think things were easier by then than in the Notre Dame days. 1800s, man, I bet you had to use like AutoCAD to design back then. <laughs> All right, that, that unfortunately 
not being dismissive, but that's where I'm doing for this right now. Um, up here. Yes, group. That one group from. All right, so if we. Oh, it is square. Cool. It's like the tower. Look has at a this crown. thing. Oh my gosh. Wow. There's leaves and stuff on here. I bet all of it's symbolic too. I was just gonna say, I bet there's a specific number mm -hmm. of leaves up there too. It's it's probably all intentional. Well, here's what I'm gonna do with it. All right. Um, actually, I'm not gonna do anything with it yet. I'm going to save, and I'm going to create one of these things right here, one of these dormers. Get a 3D space shape, a 3D shape, real quick. Random fact: Every hour, Big Ben strikes an E note. E is in Earl Grey. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe. Maybe. All right. I'm gonna make that into component. I would call this a dormer. Is, is there a different term that uh, pull it straight across? That you guys would use over there? I don't know who. I don't know who this expert on on all things British is that I am I'm referring to. But I'm just. I know we have people on from all over the world, so I'm assuming we got someone. Oh, we lost Ryan from he the went UK. Home. It's getting dark and late there. Okay, so those three like that, and then I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna make a line in the middle of this, and then that line I'm gonna take vertically. Up to here. I'm gonna grab one of these. I'm gonna put it right here, and then the copy. Two times. All right, and I made this a component, and one of the reasons I made it a component is, well, actually, it doesn't matter now. Grab these three, slide them straight back to where it hits. Grab these three, and they're gonna slide back to the bottom hits, which is actually gonna end up giving them a slightly different profile when we're done. So these three, I'm gonna say, uh, make unique. And I'm going to grab this one. This should be the same for every one of these. Then come in here, and I can say, grab this, grab this, grab this, and grab this. And then right click and intersect face with model. Then I can come back here, get rid of all this back here. Now I can come in here. Actually, I can just do this now. No, I'll, do, I'll fix all these first. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to select one of these. Select here, select here, here and here. Right click, intersect face with model. Come on the inside. Delete that. All right. And now I can select this face right here and say intersect face with model again. And then I'm going to I'll slip around this side. This will be easier to do it. Grab this, 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 this. Delete it. And then actually, I'm going to get rid of. Delete this. Basically, we just made a, a hole in that.
curb roof. So you could have triple clicked on or double clicked on that surface to leave it. Uh, so I'm, I am leaving stray lines around. I was, I was thinking I'll probably just run clean up when I'm done to get rid of, as long as I break these lines, uh, I don't have to worry about those little edges because I can run clean up and it'll get rid of those extra pieces for me. So that's good enough. Cleanup will get rid of these little little chunks are left over. Um, wasn't Christopher Ryan our, our boat expert back in the day as well? Man, man's got some knowledge, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna grab, just do another arch. arch. I just read right the, first, the first Big Ben bell cracked when they first tried to use it. So then they replaced it. And that one broke too. Whoops. So this is actually the third one. It's been repaired a couple times, but from what I read, it seems to be the same one. It seems like a really big, heavy thing to put really high up in the air. Yeah, isn't that, that's like a Liberty Bell thing too, right? Didn't the yeah, Liberty Bell, cracked. the first time they used it, it, it cracked and so now it just sits there. <laughs> I'm just making a another window here. I'm I'm pretty sure my geometry's off on this window, but uh, it's gonna work right now. So make that a component. Everything, right, bring that across. Um, let's see. We'll line it up with. Looks like it's right over the middle of this thing. So line it like that. Grab it by the center, and I can bring it right to the midpoint there. And there's three of those on the bottom. So I'll use this point right here. I'll move that option shift to the middle point of that one. Divide by two will give me a total of three. All right, so same thing I did before. I'm just gonna do both of them this time. I'm gonna have one here. <laughs> All right, Lawrence says that the bell was so heavy that it couldn't get up to the tower, so they had to lower it in using a helicopter in the 1800s. Little known fact. Sweet. Facts. Da Vinci <laughs> helicopter. Yeah, obviously. Hey, there are four smaller bells beneath Big Ben that ring on the quarter and strike the notes G sharp, F sharp, E, and B. I did not know that. I didn't know any of this stuff. I actually have to admit, I knew almost nothing about Big Ben or, I keep having looking over here, Elizabeth Tower. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I know some things. All right, there we go. So. All I did was I used, I aligned that stuff horizontally here and then vertically against each other, or vertically here and then horizontally against each other. So I'm gonna grab this first one. This first row is gonna go back into this like that. And then these two will go back like that. This one will go back like that. And the final one. Have you ever heard of a lacarne? It's a dormer on the slope of a gothic spire, usually slender and gable-fronted. This is from Nathaniel Wilkerson, who says that this is called a lacarne. I, I believe Nathaniel. He's been I spending a lot too. of time looking at roofs lately. How is that coming along? You, you guys who don't know, Nathaniel represents the Medic extensions which uh, are awesome and can't talk and click at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think, Nathaniel, correct me if I'm wrong, right now you're working on uh, a roof geometry engine, right? Okay, we gotta 
Yeah. While we're waiting for him to answer, he says he would just call them dormers, though, because it's probably a it's probably a more commonly used. So when I run intersect with model on this one, it intersects with everything else out there, including copies mm. of itself. So I end up with some extra geometry. Not a big deal. It's a little, little extra cleanup, but uh, still probably the easiest way to do this. And again, I get too hung up here. I'll just I'll go ahead and run this right now. Yeah. Nathaniel says complex roofs. It's a nightmare. I I recall that. Mm. That was something I spent a lot of time on. Uh, let me go to extension, clean up, and erase straight edges. There we go. Nice. All right. Yeah, I tend to use clean up on whole models, but I forget about just using it on the spot for little groups. It's better. And as we go down, it's going to be even easier because I grab this one. This one shouldn't hit anything else. Oh, I lied. I'm a liar. <laughs> Whoops, too much. I bleed too much. Look at that, right up against the edge. Awesome. All right, so maybe these ones won't run into anything else. Huh. Well, apparently that was all untrue. All right, so I'm going to grab... These and this. Nice, now I should be able to come in here. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Delete Lawrence that. tells us that depending on the number of notes played, it tells you if it's the quarter hour, half hour, or three quarter hour, or on the hour. I didn't know that. That's awesome. So I should have done the last one. Just double click the surface to get all the edges. There we go. All right. Woo. Super sweet. That's right. looking pretty Right amazing. here, I'm going to do a thing. <laughs> And that's exactly all I'm expecting of myself. It's gonna be something. Mm -hmm. All right. So this seems to have, all right, so it does something like this. And it arches up and out, and then, and then it's like it has a crown on it. comes out like a little bit or something. Yeah, we're off the reservation a little bit right now, but stuff is still happening. Yeah, that might be it. Because <laughs> this is where leaves and stuff start showing up. <laughs> um, what time? Are we? All right, I gotta spend uh, five minutes on this clock face. I was actually, you know what, you guys? I was looking at the clock face, and there there was a time where I was like, maybe we just do uh, that, because man, just this clock is so cool. So it's got the it's got the minute marks in here it's got like the the roman numerals for each number but it's all one big piece of metal over glass it's it's really insanely cool looking um but you know uh you're right, getting so compliments i'm gonna pull this in oh thanks yeah. guys nathaniel says it's looking really nice hats off for even attempting this ornate beast 
you've got more patience and work ethic than I have, that is for sure. Yeah, let's call it patience and work ethic, and not, <laughs> not something related to a lack of intelligence or stubbornness or, I don't know, there's some other words I could come up with. Jbone GW says, great job so far. Thanks, guys. I will be posting this on Warehouse, so you guys will have an opportunity to step up and uh, modify it however you see fit. How's that sound? And someone named Fight says they used to have a cat named Pants. Which your shirt brought up. I don't dislike that name for a pet. That's actually mm -hmm. kind of cool. Well, they keep naming kittens like mittens, socks, things like that. Why not I guess Pants? that makes sense. Yeah. I have a friend with a cat named Cake. I'm not sure where that came from. That'll work too. All right, I'm going to take that mark, and I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees times 11, or 11x, as I probably should have done. All right, and then I can just, whoops, that didn't work. It wasn't intersecting, I grabbed too little. All right, put that at 30 degrees times 11x. All right now, nope. Let's grab all this. That's interesting. It's forcing my hand, but I don't dislike this. All right. This is it, coming in on the end. Now I started, I can't stop doing this. I'm like, ah, I should have mm -hmm. just left it. I didn't left it. Oops. Not enough. This is good. I guess this is like precision work. Probably a good thing to be good at. Can, you know, slide in here in these things. Um, I'm trying to remember. So I've been been in London twice. I'm trying to remember if I've ever heard Big Ben. Uh, all right, get these guys all popping out one inch. I certainly didn't know that if I had heard it, that the chimes were different for the different uh, times, uh, half hour versus hour, whatever. That's 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 some pretty cool information. All right, that was cool. I'm gonna come over here. Just read that those hands were originally blue, but the smoke in London eventually made them black, and then they just painted. They just gave up and painted it black, but they just recently repainted them blue to kind of restore it back to the original design. All right. Apparently, after the picture that we're looking at. <laughs> This all got, this didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Try it again, hold up. Everybody pretend that didn't happen. Oh boy. 
I'm going to undo a bit. All right. We don't have a perfectly up and down hand. That's my problem. I was trying to make that, that, that look like something that it did not look like. There we go. Nope. There we don't go. Ah! <laughs> Who's in charge of me? All right, let's let's try that all again. We've all been there. Yeah, but most of you don't do that in front of hundreds of people live. That's that's my special thing I get to do. Screw up. Someone's <laughs> asking you about the extra buttons on the connection mouse. Do you? Use yeah, those? so they're they are all programmable. You can actually make this do an insane amount of uh, crazy amount of functionality. Sorry. All right, and there we go. Um, I think the minute hand is actually straight all the way down. Oh, is it? Not straight. I mean, it gently tapers, but it doesn't have a thingy at the end. Okay. That's okay. This is an interpretive clock. No, that's that's cool. We can make that happen. It just looked like I, I couldn't tell. It's like a little nice little round end. Not mine. Mine's sharp. All right. Neo Neo Goth. It's going to be the only thing on here that's not... X-ray mode right now. This is where I'm at. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab this by the center and align it with the center. And then I will. Whoops. Nope. it out to the point that it hits one of those. There we go. And then over here, this is why I had x-ray on. That's right. I remember x-ray now. I'm going to get rid of these things and these. Put a new circle in here. No, that was, that's not good. Oh, I have a, I, set the circle to 48 because uh, made some, oh, the clock face, I want a little more fidelity? I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. And uh, all right, something like that. Awesome. That's a little too pointy. That's like poke you in the eye pointy. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. That one is pointy. Not super pointy, but it's pointy. Uh oh. No, I'm good. No, that's good. That's good. All right. Don't mess with me. All right, come here. Come here. I'll show you something. I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it vertical. That way I can use something's not quite out of, not quite in plane though. Not sure what. Let's see. Do some troubleshooting. Model troubleshooting. So we're going way down. Model, ooh, that's too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so what we'll be doing here is, whoop, whoop, too much. Get rid of that, get rid of that, and all 
almost there, almost there. Get rid of that, get rid of that. You got a tiny Circle. bit left on the top right. Oh. There we go, thank you. All right, go from the center, we pull up to this corner right here. Oops, I pulled it around the corner. That wasn't centered. Oh well, it'll be it'll work. It'll be close-ish. <laughs> it'll be exactly what it is because guy by the middle as well. Oh no, where's everything? There we go. Man, I just... Why so many issues? Come on, our hand. Work with me. Oh, now you're just messing with me. Alright, there we go. Grab by the center. Let's go to x ray. Give me a center point. Give me something. Give me a center point. There we go. Save request. Yeah, that's a great idea. I did not quite I make think these. You that off center when you, the last move. Um. Sorry, about Alberto, there's a delay, so we, we didn't hear your advice to do what he did until it was too late. What do we got? Three. Christopher Morin says the hour hand is under the minute hand. Of course it is. All right. That makes sense because the hour hand is within this... Uh, little cage kind of thing. Minute hands on the outside. Oh, All right. that does make sense. And we are right about... And that is now. Wow, look at that. Delete that. Can't do some more stuff down here. That. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, now with edges off and shadows on. Right, let me keep cleaning. Uh, I'm liking those gray lines. I feel like a sepia I, would be even nicer. You know, I might have to like make that a thing. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to come over here and turn our edges off and turn our shadows on. Ooh. Ooh. That's mm. pretty. Mm. That's pretty as American for lovely. <laughs> Abdul says, great job, 100. Christopher nice. says, perfection. Ooh, that's good. That's, that's good pretty good. Awesome. Saved. Whew. That was cool. That was a fun one. I, 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 like I said, I was really thinking to get to more detail than that, but I, I'm not going to complain whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check. Turn my edges on and go to even lighter color. Mm. I, feel like, <laughs> like, I feel like that's the 
should be a winner. What's the actual color of it? Isn't it kind of like an orangey brown? It's like, yeah, tan, antique brick kind of thing going on. Yeah, kind of a sand, a sandy yeah, color. Yeah, sand would work. Maybe a little darker. That'll work for now. Awesome. Well, there we are. That is our uh, three hours or so of modeling the uh, the Elizabeth Tower, which houses Big Ben. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully everybody learned something. That's really one of the big things that uh, we tried to make this enjoyable to watch on some level, uh, but hopefully ended up learning something. We really try to accidentally, if nothing else, squeeze some education in there. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully that's, uh, something that, that you guys, everybody picked up a, a thing or two new. I know I did. I had a couple things come out. Thank you guys for always helping me learn something new. I learned probably more on Friday afternoons than I do the rest of the week. Uh, cause we have so many people out there with so many unique ways of doing stuff. It's awesome. But that is it for today. Uh, thank you all for coming. I always say if it wasn't for you guys being here, just be sitting alone in a room modeling and, <laughs> and uh, nobody gets anything out of that. So uh, it's, uh, well, actually I do. That's, those are called the skill builder videos I release. That's basically when I'm in a room alone. <laughs> Rather hang out with you guys though. Um, uh, and yeah, special thanks, Alberto. Thanks for helping us out. Christopher, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Uh, love when you guys can chime in and, and give us some information, help us out with the models. Uh, that's it for today. So we're gonna wrap this thing up. Um, to next week, we will be doing it. We will be here again. I know it's, we've kind of been a week on week off kind of thing, but next week we will absolutely be here. We will be doing this uh, again. And I think we're gonna be doing face me components next week. So I have had the same 2D figure since I started. Um, you guys have probably seen it before. And I'm just feeling like four years I've been working here, it's time for a new face me component. So I want you guys to give me a hand. Uh, we're gonna talk a lot about what makes a good picture for a 2D component. We're gonna talk about some uh, methods of actually creating them, what's good, what's bad, that sort of thing. But I want you guys' help because I haven't actually decided what I'm gonna do on my picture. I don't know what it's gonna be me doing. So we'll show up with some options. We'll, uh, we'll use the Google, I'm sure. Um, but come with your ideas, help me out, and uh, hopefully, again, hopefully some learning will happen. We'll see. But uh, that's it for this week. Uh, next week, come on back, and, and we'll leave, I'll leave the stream up and running for a little while. So if you guys have ideas of things you think would make good live models, go ahead and throw that out there. Um, I will warn, I know sometimes you work in an industry where you have maybe a name for something that makes perfect sense to you. <laughs> But typing in that you want us to do a, you know, a powder coated EL75, we've had a couple requests that I just, I don't even know what they are. <laughs> so, but again, also, you gotta find that sweet spot. Don't be generic and go house, car. You know, give us a little bit more than that. So somewhere in between there's the sweet spot and most likely to get picked if we can come up with some level of detail but we can actually find what the thing is. So, uh, yeah. Leave, leave a note, let us know what you want to do, and thank you guys for showing up. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you to Katya. Say bye, hey. Katya. Bye, everybody. Thank nice you, guys. Being here.